That's why our planet is one of the most sought out planets for extraterrestrials because it's rich in everything, the land, the water. It was terraformed by extraterrestrials. So a lot of the ecology and the trees and the bees and certain things that are here don't actually come from here. Yeah, they, insects, were brought, they were yeah, insects that were yeah. brought here to, trees, to, to terraform this mm. planet. This is why when people have certain allergies, it's because of these things that have been brought here from somewhere else. So they're beings whose sparks from the source could destroy entire universes. Welcome to part two of our reaction to the Terence Howard video. You know what, everyone's been asking where you are. They thought I sacked you or something. Cause, <laughs> can you let them know that, yeah, you, you, were, you, were, you went away to the mother. I told them you went to the mother. Yeah, like, I went to Ghana. But, yeah, but you're back now. So, so I'm back now. Yeah, how was it? How was it? Be beautiful experience. Yeah. Anyone that hasn't been to Africa, grab a friend or get in contact with someone and then... Yeah, I think we're going to, yeah, we'll yeah. touch on that in another video. But let's get into this reaction um, to the rest of this. Let's listen. Horizontal one. This is a negative space with 24 bubbles in it. Bare pyramids, isn't it? You see. distinguish this from the background because all of the electrical potential has been accounted for. This would be the Bose-Einstein condensate where, where something is, becomes indistinguishable from the fabric of space itself, the final state of matter. Something, and the proof of this, the platonic solids, they have a thing called discrete symmetry. You can put the cubes together, maybe you can put the dodecahedrons together, but you can't put all of them together. But you can take the wave conjugations right here and they form super symmetrical systems where everything aligns. So there's a, a site that that James sent over to you, and you'll. This will be the final thing, and then I'll I'll be quiet for a second. <laughs> but because I, I, this is the final, this right here. Now these are sculpt other sculptures I've built. There's a a video, um, and you'll see that flower. You if you'll pop it up from Terry's linchpins that that he sent you. You'll see, and that. This is one of four super symmetrical systems that I patented. And the reason I patented it was because when Walter Russell put his stuff up, you have to just go down a little bit and we're gonna get to gravity, not that one. We're gonna get to gravity in a second, not that one. We're not even there yet. There, te tetraterian wave conjugations. Now these are all of those systems put together. This is the, where 12 bubbles meet the Albrean. Mm -hmm. And then I put five of them together and they make these natural starfish. But then when I put 10 of them together, they lay themselves out and they predict all distribution of matter within the electric field. And you can see where six bubbles meet on the, as you get to a higher point on it, those where six bubbles are meeting, still fitting perfectly where the 12 bubbles are meeting and where, this, where the four and where the eight that's a super symmetrical system. I put 12, uh, if I put 20 of those where six bubbles meet, the Antonians, they make a natural dodecahedron that's naturally curved. If I take where the 12 bubbles meet, that's where I made the linchpin from, ultimately from some of those pieces you got right there, that all shape of it. So that was one of the first things, but when Walter Russell came out with his book, and he introduced his periodic table. He watched as different people went up and collected Nobel prizes for deuterium, for tritium, for all these things that he had discovered. And I was like, okay, let me wait until the patents are granted before I'll talk about it mm. so that they won't be able to stop it. But what makes more sense? Were they invented straight lines in opening the flower? or where you actually take the individual pieces of the flower and put it together based on universal ratios. Which one do you think is how the givers of that knowledge intended for us to use it? Well, it makes sense because you're... So, so you see that even though people want to like, um, some of the people that are kind of trying to slander him and say he doesn't know what he's talking about, um, how the master explained to us about duality that he's saying, the curved lines and they're straight lines. So it's really 
not saying one or the other, but the, the fact that they both exist, mm. but they only chose to kind of deal with straight lines, which makes everything just like square and but yeah, yeah, square. So they can't deal with the science though. Mm. What he was just showing, how you're putting those, you know, those patterns together. But let's keep for the negative space and the straight lines are not. Bingo. Yeah, but it must be something. And so, and then these these are all physical representations that you've created. Yep. That are all of a, of those things. Same thing. That's the algorithm right there. How is this received? Like when oh. you you talk to people about this? Oh man, they they first because I didn't show them. I hadn't shown them. I introduced it with let's talk about our fundamentals are a little bit off. There are no straight lines. Right. So I reached out to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I saw him at an event um, uh, up front, you know, at the Fox. And he was like, hey, man, yeah, I'd love for you to come on my show, do my radio, do my TV thing. We love that. I was like, yeah, but let me, I've got something I want to introduce to you. Um, and it was only 36 pages. It was a treatise. And I told him it was controversial, and I sent him over that the 36-page thing that had the wave conjugations in it, but I started it off with one times one equaling two. And he went in on my treaties, wrote, red lined <laughs> everything. He attacked that I had immediate, that I had talked about Walter Russell and Victor Schauberger and John Keeley as, and Tesla as the people that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. He attacked them, but then he started attacking, you know, one times one equaling two. How did he attack them? Oh, he was, he was, because I asked him, I said, it, I said, under what conditions? I said, it's illogical where the square root of, num of a number added to itself would equal more than that number squared. You see, I have to give him respect because mm -hmm. he's bigging up people that before him, like, you know, like Tesla. And, yeah. and, and the thing is, that's what I was saying before, that like, how can people be in the field, like when we talk about people that are talking about this knowledge that the master has been putting out for years, but they don't mention it. Mm. But if you're following the footsteps of someone who has already done the work, you kind of give them reference or mm. give them props, isn't it? So it's good that at least he's recognising that. But the mainstream obviously didn't want to, um, yeah, but follow that's that. That's what happens with the square root two. That's what happens with most of the numbers. I was like, how is it that multiplication, if it means to make more and increase a number, how is one times one equaling one part of the multiplication table? Now, I understand that if you're seeing it one time, right? but we call that once. But the moment that you have that, add the times in there, that multiplicative indicator, that means there's more than one. So now each equation is supposed to be balanced. You know, that equal sign is supposed to show that there's a balance between these two numbers over here and a balance on this one over here. What happened to the other one mm. Mm. in this equation? It does not, it didn't equate. And then I took the square root of that number. I took the square root of two. Because all this started in third grade. I was arguing with my teacher because we we're talking about the square root of 100. Oh, my God. So you fall? Yeah, that's my um, detox thing. <laughs> so I'm supposed to detox right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny. How do, you, how do you detox? You detox on a timer? What do you do? Mm. There's uh, my wife got me these things, you know, because I'm supposed to take this. What is that? And <laughs> pure body extract. And um, there's Advanced another one. Advanced daily cellular detox. What's in this? And this too. He's not, he's not letting up. <laughs> nah. What's in there? These things to counteract the natural me the metals that we have in our bodies that that wear us out. And you mm -hmm. just take these periodically yeah, throughout the day on a yeah, timer. Yeah, I, I gotta do it now. I gotta do it. Okay. Now. I take a dropper, part of that dropper, and then four sprays, and it it removes the parasites from your system, okay. like oil of oregano, like using oil of oregano instead of using. Um, um, antibiotics and so it'd be like we, yeah so yes. it'd be like when the master just says that we need to fast certain times like so timing is important dealing with yeah life. yeah because the like the ions and the metals in your body you've got to kill the parasites mm. um, parasites are generally 
feeding off of what you're eating, isn't it? So like the salts and the sugars, they will basically feed on that. And so when people are taking, you know, like vitamins and stuff, um, sometimes they don't, or even the food they're eating, they don't get the nutrition mm. because the parasites are getting it. Mm. So you have to kill the parasites and then do maybe like a colon cleanse to flush out the parasites. And then you start to receive the nutrition mm. that you're, you know, putting into your body. And people should be eating to get nutrition, not for the taste, mm. which is where the poisons with the salt and the sugars come in because they put salt and sugar and everything. So, yeah, you're right. So if you fast, fasting is one of the most natural ways that you can to eliminate toxins eliminate and waste from your yeah. body. Yeah. So, okay? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah? What do you feel? Can you take well, I used to have really thick, dark circles under my eyes. Mm. That's gone away in the last six months I've been using that. My skin, I'm 55 years old. I'm 55 years old and I smoke. Do I look like I'm 55 No, years you don't. Old? You look great. And you think that's because of this? I think, well, I'm going to show you a picture of what I used to look like when my wife met me. And I don't know if you could... <laughs> <laughs> She'll be mad if I throw this up, but she, 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 she's a beautiful one. But um, this is what I looked like when my wife met me. I was 256 pounds. Were you eating differently? Um, I was... Well, now I'm intermittent fasting. I follow her. Routine, we just said that. But <laughs> That's good. She turned me from that into this. It's like she shined up. Yeah, you look about 15 years younger. Now. Yeah. And that's because of her. I still smoke my cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do that? Kind of a bit of a contradiction, <laughs> isn't it? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has to have some vice. Like Adam Watts said, you've got to have some some balance of beneficence and, and rascality to you. We have a fan in here, by the way. If you want to smoke yeah, in here, you're more than welcome to. I don't trust people, you know, that walk around, oh, I'm just... People get so <laughs> offended true. by gurus a lot of times and yogis because they think they're these calm and passive people when they get angry they're like oh that that was uh, that was a directed anger that was that was a purposeful anger to, to wake you up to something they for, and then they find out they have a girlfriend <laughs> 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 they find out that they smoke and they're like oh well, this is a lie right but that's the real person that's what i loved about alan watts he had a wife and he had and he had his mistresses he ended up dying with his, one of his, his girlfriend and his wife you know, often in his little place, but he spoke the truth. He was honest. Life is about the give and take. There's a balance in there, mm -hmm. you know. To be human is to be flawed. It's to be beautiful. Yeah, it's part of the beauty of us. And it's part of the cre why we create. Uh, I don't think you create from a, a perfect place of enlightenment. I think you, part of the chaos of being a human being is the beauty of the creation. It's why, why we create the most fucked up people the best artists are some of the most fucked up people my favorite musicians my favorite comedians my favorite actors yeah almost all of them are fucked up yeah my uncle used to call it he said if you you don't get any flour to grow unless you throw some shit on it <laughs> <laughs> so back to neil degrasse tyson and this critique of so Tesla. he threw shit on on he was like well tesla's tesla stuff worked but tesla was never really respected and out there and he wanted i guess he wanted me to support Bohr or schringer or or Feynman or any of those people and i'm looking at the Feynman diagrams i'm like you made all these things up you've got you're basically doing the mr spock thing if you want to find the answer to something then you cancel out all the possibilities all other possibilities and you root it down to one thing. So that means going through the whole universe to answer one question. And that's the problem with probability. That's the problem with, with uh, Heisenberg uncertainty, um, uncertainty. That's the problem with Schrodinger. All of those were just these probabilities because they had taken the ether out. They forgot the electromagnetic wave. Mm -hmm. It had to have a medium in which it followed on. 
it had to have something in which it was moving on. They don't exist in isolation. No, they do not. And it, it cannot be the cause of its own action. An effect can never be the cause of the action. Mm. The, the chicken... <laughs> we're going to touch on that chicken thing. But um, this is what we're talking about in terms of the Big Bang, isn't it? Because mm. people say everything started from the Big Bang, but it's like, what caused it? Yeah, cause there has to be thing. something to cause it. Yeah. But let's hear about this. Not come be the egg cannot be come before the chicken. The chicken has to be there first in order to lay it. It has to mate. And what Einstein... Yeah, we have to touch on this because mm. I see the comments were going crazy yeah, on part yeah. one about the chicken and the egg. The point we were making, because some people were like, okay, you're saying the chicken came from the dinosaur, so that means that the chicken still came first because mm. the chicken came from the dinosaur. The point we were making is that if you didn't know about the dinosaur and you were only given the choice of the chicken coming from the egg or the egg coming from the chicken, it's like a, a riddle that just mm, you're just yeah. stuck because yeah. you can't break out of that. But by introducing the fact that you have the dinosaur where the chicken came from, it shows you that life is a cycle. So the dinosaur comes from something and that mm. comes from something and that comes from something. That's the point we're making that you can't just exclude everything else and say, which came first, the chicken or the mm. egg? So that, I hope that clarifies yeah, that. The, the chicken evolved from something, which was the dinosaur. That's right. <laughs> and then the evolution goes, and yeah. when things die and pass on, they yeah. go back into, and it's just a cycle. That's, That's the point it. we were making. All right. Was the equal and opposite of magnetism. So when he, back to Neil deGrasse, when he wrote his response to my paper, and he said, if you have any other questions, you're going to have to see somebody else, and he wouldn't take my calls anymore. I was like, okay. So I wrote wow. the book based off of those responses, and I reached out to another guy, um, Dr. David Tong. It's probably very, very interesting that that would be his take as a public educator, that he wouldn't want to talk to you anymore the reason i wanted to talk to him was because of his show the cosmos that he mm -hmm. was doing after after that incredible guy you know carl sagan did mm -hmm. the very first episode he had was talking about um giordano bruno mm -hmm. and he said that giordano bruno was looking for that grand unified field equation and maybe one day somebody is going to do it and when they do it it's going to change the world and i'm like dude i've done it i've I've, I've got it here. You know what? That's funny. It's like, it's the same thing, isn't it? When we're saying, like, people are talking about Toth and they don't know that that's Tahuti. Mm. They're saying the language, they don't know about the language. And we're like, we're here. We've got it. The master's here. He's the one. He's the, the person you lot are talking about. And it's like, people kind of just pass it over. Yeah. Such vitriol that I... I was like, oh, okay, maybe I need to walk away from this. Dr. David Tong from Cambridge, a professor at Cambridge, did a video on, on, on physics of the world, and he said it's all a lie. And he explained that there was these 16 fields, you know, that they, everything that they had taught was this, and they gave the best understanding and interpretation that they had of it. But... It was all a lie because they didn't understand how it worked. Why? Because the Michelson-Morley experiment from 1887, where they were trying to define the ether or the earth in this etheric space, problem was they kept with Newtonian laws, so they thought the ether didn't move. They thought it was still. But there was another guy, Larmor, that did it in um, early 1800s, and he went off of Thomas Young, who influenced the Fresnel lens, came, you know, influenced Fresnel, came up with the Fresnel lens. But he talked about a, a moving ether that had opposing vortices. Mm. So I didn't learn all of this stuff until I was getting ready to have conversations with people because I was looking, where has this work been done? But if you look at, at um, Giordano Bruno's work, it looks a lot like my stuff but he still had straight lines, and I think he put those straight lines in there to appease the church. Oh, wow. So that he oh. wouldn't get killed. Oh my God. And they still killed him. They hung <laughs> him upside down in 1600, the Catholic Church, mm. 1599, hung him upside down in a stake and set him on fire. Was it? <laughs> I mean, that's just confirming, like, anyone that goes against the religious 
the three major religions mm. they try and take out because you're going against their belief. So if you're coming mm. with actual facts, which in my city has been coming from 1962, he's been coming with actual facts up to this present day, mm. he's been coming with actual facts and he's going against the establishment. So they are seeing him as a threat. Mm. So this is what yeah, it's like you know when they believed that the world was flat, flat and yep. they'll, you know they'll kill people for saying things yeah. that went against the yeah. You're right. Uh, that's a very valid point. As he refused to recant that the God that they were talking about was not the true God of the universe. It was much larger than that. Their story went back six thousand years, <laughs> and there's other traditions and, and tra of course we teach about the Adamites <laughs> six thousand years. <laughs> no coincidence, every time they date everything, it only goes for 6,000 years yeah, because yeah. they're only dealing with where it says in the Bible they were given dominion over the planet oh, and yeah. they named everything and that only goes back 6,000 years yeah. to 4,004 or 4,000 BC. Odds around the world where their stories go back 200,000 years. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they made a lot more sense. So how have we limited ourselves? You take Noah having three sons, Shem, Jepheth and, and Ham, mm. one was black, one was Asian, and one was white. So That's that not, no, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but we, 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 we subscribe to that. We right. subscribe to that dogma, and everybody's entitled to whatever opinion they want to have. I don't think that opinion is right. We're going off in so many different directions. But I, I do want to talk about this. I, okay. do, I do want to get to this, because I would love to know your, your, uh, what you believe happened. But the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing is so confusing to me that he, so he was critical of Tesla. He was critical of Tesla, he was critical of Walter Russell, and he was critical of John Keeley. He, the, this, this is not his field of study though, right? No, he's astrophysicist, he's an astrophysicist, right. but Walter Russell talked about that the earth, Walter Russell talked about the fact that the sun gave birth to the earth, that it didn't coalesce from some field, and the proof of this, do you guys know that the Earth is drifting away from the sun? Yes, yeah, slightly. At, at, this is the mistake I made at, at the Oxford, at, they, because they wouldn't allow me to bring my notes or anything. So I said, the drift was, the drift was six inches a year. It's 0.6 inches a year. Mm -hmm. So if you add up how long it would take the Earth to move, because in all of the planets, in every solar system, is drifting away from their primary at this same exact rate like 1.5 1. 1. centimeters. So this is a universal expansion that's happening with everything moving away. So them saying, the and the Webb Telescope have proven that those galaxies couldn't have formed right. 13, 14 billion years ago. But if you would just add up linearly how long it would take the Earth to go from the sun to 93 million miles away, it's nine trillion. <laughs> That's all in our books. Yep. <laughs> Let's go. I, I put, I did all of the little calculations. These are not little calculations. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm done. I love that expression, it, but. <laughs> little, well, man, don't turn my phone off. Don't do that. Every oh, time man. I get ready, well, they're <laughs> watching me right now. And they're mad at me. Who's there? Um. The people that want that, our entire world economy is based off of the politicians and the authorities that give the politicians their accreditation. And those authorities, those universities are all based, they, their entire curriculum is based off of platonic solids. And our world economy is based off of one times one equaling one. And so you think they fuck with your phone? Oh, I'm sure. Because now <laughs> so who is it? You want to pause it? The master teacher said, those in authority authorise things to make it appear to be authentic. That's right. So that's why even books are about authors. Mm. They have the authority over it. So, yeah, who are the authorities and who gave them the power yeah. to be the authors of everything, mm. you see? So when you're reading or trying to find stuff out, you always go to, like, say, Google. You go to Webster's Dictionary or Oxford's Dictionary, but you don't think, well, who are they? Yeah, you know? where did they get their Where did they get their information from? Well, validates their stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who's policing the police? <laughs> you drop the phone? I've dropped my phone a number of times, but... You ever think that that might be what's going on with your and phone? And then I buy another phone, and the same, same thing, thing happens. happens. I'm five you get minutes... burners? 
I, I used to, but then my wife would think I was cheating. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, you know, I don't need that. I don't need that. I made that mistake way too early, you know, in our relationship. And it cost me eight years of, of toil and pain. But I ultimately made it back. And I'm so glad that, uh, you know, we produce 1,500 sperm per heartbeat. Women are born with 200 to 500,000 eggs in each of their ovaries. They don't get any more. The amount of buildup, the need to reproduce for males is, is great. And we're 98.7% identical to, to simians, to chimpanzees. What do they have? They have a harem by nature. Mm -hmm. There's only a one point. Yeah, yeah the we, mm. I don't know about. <laughs> we do know certain people mm -hmm. are mixed with simians, yeah. canines, and porcines. Yep. Um, but the genetics tells you that anyway. So this is actually interesting because when you listen to people make comments or in videos and they say we, mm. it's like not everybody's in the same boat. Yeah, and I think, I think he's saying we like to not to be kind of like, Divisive, yeah, yeah, and and be inclusive. Like, like put, you, like saying, like you guys are from there, but yeah. we are not. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. But it's good to point it out to mm. the people watching because people say, "Oh, we're all human. Yeah, no. We all, mm. um, we all have blood in our veins." Yeah. But you're like, okay, but when you go into the blood and blood types. the different blood types, <laughs> they, we're not all the same because yeah. you got. Rh negative, you've got positive. yeah O A. So yeah. yeah, we all have blood, but when you look deeper, we have different blood types. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. All right. Let's keep going. Three percent differentiation between us and them, and that one point three percent is supposed to dominate over the ninety eight. I'm just glad I'm fifty five now, and sperm production is slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, you can always, always get a phone that you don't use as anything other than to contact a couple people. Yeah, but this, I, that would work. But I, I'm like, if they're going to hear, they're going to hear. Yeah, <laughs> that is an issue. So, so you, this is the math. This is okay. the math. So it would, so 5,000, 5, 5,280 feet in a mile, 12 inches in a foot. Therefore, um, it's 61 mile equals 63,360 inches. So the number of years that it will take for the earth to move one mile is 105,600 years. So that in order for the earth to reach where we are at 93 million miles, it would take 9 trillion, 820 billion, 800 million years for the earth to get here. Likewise, Mars, at 147 million miles away from the sun, it would take 15 trillion, 780 billion, 480 million years for Mars to get where it was. So at a given point, Mars was here in the Goldilocks zone. Mm. And now Venus is going to inherit the Goldilocks zone next. The sun will get, Mercury is under a high oppression because they're still under the mis uh, mis mistake thinking that there's a void in space. So they forget that Mercury is under the highest pressure possible. So it can expand, it's like hydrogen. It's like those octaves before hydrogen. So the atmosphere, the iron isn't able to release any oxygen and the oxides, but when you get to 67 million miles away from the sun, the pressure is a little less, but it's still so much higher than the pressure, than the pressure um, on Earth. It's like going, deep into the be very belly of the earth. That pressure is so very high. And so now the clouds, that there, there's a great deal of sulfur, there's a great deal of, 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 of ammonia and all of those mm. things in it. But once earth moves to where Mars is, Venus is going to slowly move and will be right here. You know, in maybe five or six trillion years, Venus will be right here and humanoids will appear again and unwind. The same way, and that asteroid belt that we have right now mm -hmm. between Mars and Jupiter, that used to be a planet. And I believe that they had... Really we have to stop that, it? Because the master explains mm. that in the science of creation and man from planet oh, risk, yeah. um, mission Earth, because it talks about the crash mm -hmm. of Nibiru to Meldek and how that formed uh, the part that used to be a part of Tamak that yeah, came yeah, yeah. from the astro belt. Um, so yeah, it's just on point. Yeah, the 
same way that everything that's the periodic table. They call it the periodic table because these things happen according to periodicity. They happen under regular events. You change the motion and pressure conditions, the, the crystallation changes. We call it a different element, but it's the same substance like my hand is one substance, but if I do it like this and do it like this and do it like this, it looks like a whole different thing. And they can call it a different element, but it's the same element under different motion and pressure conditions. I believe that serious, serious. So when he's talking about that, I could be talking about the solid, liquid and gas, the water, different transformation of the water stages. Yeah, um, but he, I think he's more saying like, if, if something is the same, but it kind of moves to, like for example, um, I think he might, maybe it's not him, he might touch on it where he's, like for example, if you press a note, on the keyboard, mm. but then you move it somewhere else and press the same C, mm. for example, it's the same thing, it's just mm. that it's a different octave now. Mm. Yeah, but it's still the same properties, which is still gonna be the same C. All right. It used to be a planet when it was here, and the humanoids are Oh, did you hear what you just said? Mm -hmm. Sirius used to be a planet. <laughs> that sounds like, obviously, Sirius C got destroyed, isn't it? And mm. that's where we were originally from. from yeah. Then we had to, evacuate, relocate. So yeah, he's, he's on point. Everything expands as a sphere. No sphere in our universe, no bubble has a solid core. We're perceiving it as a solid core. Yeah, that's what you just said about solid, solid liquid, and gas mm. as well. It's it's just a bubble. Mm. And that CERN, that hydron collider, that particle accelerator, I believe they did the same thing and they popped their planet. And it became that asteroid belt. Really? Just take, if you add up all of the weight of the mass of those, of, of the asteroids in the asteroid belt, it will probably equal the same mass as that of Mars. I thought the concept of the asteroid belt was, well, first of all, there's the concept of Earth-1 and Earth-2, right? So yeah. Earth-1 was a planet that was hit by a planet, and that's how our moon was established. When, when have we seen... So that's what we were just talking about, right? Because... Tamat original, it's been known by many names, mm. um, Ard, and then it, from where they get the word Earth, Earth yeah. but it was what, three to four times, times the size so, it is now, yeah. and through that breaking away, they had to remold it and form mm. it, and that's what put it on this orbit that it's on now, and then the other parts are what, yeah, there's the missing mass, so he's right. Happened in nature. Well, we haven't seen it yet, right? But these things take a long ass time and we don't have a whole lot of ability to see things. Our ability to see things, even with the James Webb telescope, is fairly limited, right? Which is one of the reasons why they're able to find these galaxies that should not have been able to be formed in such a short period of time to the extent that they have, which confuses them if they're looking at this 13.7 billion year old universe. These things should be much older Right, in order to be this size, in order to be in the position where they're at. So you believe that the sun is the origin of these planets? Of all the planets. Every solar, every, every solar star system. Within. Straight out of our doctrine, <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, folks, you have to get the books. We keep mentioning the books. Man from Planet Risk by Dr. Malachi Z. York, Mission Earth, Extraterrestrial and Creation. Black Book. The Black Book. <laughs> Um, we can go on and on where this has been yeah. broken down like 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. So a lot of people are just catching up to the information that he put out. Go, yeah, the Holy Tablets, um, well, that was like 95, 96. Mm. Yeah, so all this is already nothing to us. System gives birth to all of these other planets. This is what Walter Russell had talked about. This is what Neil deGrasse and they attacked him for because he talked about the drift, this mm -hmm. natural drift, and that wasn't it more, didn't make more sense, and they didn't have the idea of dark matter and dark energy then. Right. They didn't even come up with that, and now we understand 4% of the universe is visible, right. and 75% of it, 74 or something, that's the whole in the master secrets. of it is dark energy, and 20 something percent of it is dark matter unperceivable things and they say that's because they needed to figure out how would they get the spin and create and have the the the, the, the uh 
galaxy. Why are they That's all together? That's galaxy. Right. Well, what my team did, Chris Seeley, who's my, um, he's, <laughs> he's, he's my Scotty. We, we used the same simulator that they use at Princeton. And we took linchpins, and we haven't even introduced linchpins yet, but it'll be a great introduction for it. We took linchpins, this configuration of where, um, where six pentagons meet. And we put them in particular order. There at the, there's a link for that right inside of the thing that, that James, James Pellegrini sent over to to you if you'll pull that up and we rebuilt the planet Saturn without gravity and it has the rings with no animation it has the rings and the hexagon that's observed at the mm. very top of it without dark matter without dark energy without gravity showing that it's an outward inward outward force pushing down that creates the planet if you can pull that up and he explains it out it's like three minutes long. And where does the matter come from? He used, well, the matter, remember, that's condensation. Mm -hmm. If you were to picture, before so we watch it, a, yeah, before we watch it, let, let me explain something. If you were to picture the waves at the ocean, you know, the darker the waves, the deeper the water, you can't see a distinguishing fact between them until they crash into each other. That splatter, that, that little foam that comes mm -hmm. out, it lasts for a couple seconds and then it settles back on there and it's just the balance between this force and this force. Mm -hmm. That's the physical universe. Those few seconds that it takes that matter, that more dense water and the foam to recoalesce and get balanced again with the surrounding environment. That's the entire time that our universe or all these universes have worked together, but if you play this, this is at the very beginning of my book. That's why I went on that, that at the Emmys and I was like, look, I've got a whole, got something else to do. I've been able to rebuild Saturn without gravity, with no animation. <laughs> People think he's nuts <laughs> and, and I like that. I don't grab me. Well, Rebu 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 rebuilding Saturn. Soundbite, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you. This is not something like your explanation of these things and your description of the very nature of reality itself is not something that should be taken lightly. No, it's something that like, thank you for saying that. It needs to, it needs to be laid out and it needs to be slowly examined in every, cause you've obviously spent a lot of time working on this, this thing here. Play. So play this. Jay, play. Well, and this is us. What, Jamie? Just to clarify what I'm going to Yeah, and turn it up. Hold on, hold on. There's yeah, two you're... different videos. One's long, one's short. No, this is going to be the short one. At the computer it... just reset itself, too, because okay. all the files freaked it out. Um, <laughs> the yeah. government, man. I don't know. I, I was about to say, it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. He yeah, knows where your computer is. It will be the first one. This one, correct? Um, uh, gravity gravity is, an effect, okay. is an effect so of electricity. Okay. So turn it up so... Because yeah. Chris does a full narration of it. Is, oh, it's still on my computer. Still and he was talking to my wife and explaining to her what what he had worked on. And it just, it was, this is seven years, six years ago, I think. Or maybe five years ago. But as soon as it, as soon as it allows you to. It's, it's, the center. Yeah, rewind it just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, here we go. It's just three minutes. I have long. two groups of vortexes which are just like tornadoes, tornadoes, you know, spinning tornadoes that are pointing towards the center. As I highlight this object here, you'll see it, that yellow line, right? So there's, there's a bunch of those in there. There's actually 16 of them, and I'll highlight them. Oh, hold on, it's not doing anything. See, it's just, no, it's about to happen. No, It'll nothing's happening. My computer just froze again, is what I'm trying to say. Oh. Something freaked out the, my, my computer. I'm not going to just try to... You want to reboot? I mean, I think it already did. I'll try again, yeah, hold on. You have to pause. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Yeah, that's what it should be doing, but it's gonna basically, you'll see. Oh, wait, that's weird. I have. <laughs> this computer's on the screen is not what I can see on my computer screen. Can you... It's the fucking government. <laughs> <laughs> They're running out, man. <laughs> I, think yeah. sometimes. I assume they listen to everything I say. They do. I'm sure. They do. You, you took a lot a, of boring shit. You took a bold stand, though, years ago when. 
the governments were trying to poison their citizens. You took a very bold stand that nobody else took. That's what I was like, wow, I appreciate you because I lost three, four jobs because I refused to take it. I refuse. I bet you feel better about it now. I'm, well, especially when you know all these people that have health problems because of it. Cancers has increased three hundred percent. All cause mortality up forty percent in some age groups. Pulmonary embolisms almost up like five hundred percent. Yeah, what would cause that? Well, Crazy. spike proteins that's being built and collected within the in the system. We can yeah. go into. I, I have a. I can walk you through what the spike protein did to the BRCA one gene. That's that gene inside of our, our DNA that tells us that there's a damage, there's damage that's happening almost like the crews that, work, that go along the highway and they immediately put up cones every time there's a problem. Well, the this, this spike protein, which is never, no, no protein has ever been able to enter into the nucleus of the cell. Not only did it, did it go to the ribosomes and say, hey, you know what? I don't want you to produce whatever protein, like if it was a skin, skin cell, I mean, you're not going to produce keratin anymore. You're just going to produce these spike proteins. That spike protein went into the DNA and it tells the BRCA1 gene, turn off. And that's the gene that says, hey, there's a mutation here. Let's scrap that thing. And so now the cancers are building up. The spike proteins weren't shedding from the body. They collected in the ovaries. They collected in the lymph nodes. They collected in the bone marrow. So now we have all of these diseases that's showing themselves because the body is overwhelmed trying to deal with the spike protein that's attaching itself to the ACE2 and the endothelial cells in our um, just vascular stop that system. For well, let me let him finish. The more boosters you get, boom, the You're worse your system. Right, again, this is one of those things where there's a lot of generalization because it's, when you said the we and mm. everyone's DNA is different and people, DNA, you can reprogram it. Mm. So as we know, the master has explained how COVID, COVID or COVID, COVID came about and it was extraterrestrials yeah. messing with certain genetic markers. Mm. So it's not going to apply to everyone. But as usual, everybody just think it's all one everything applies to everyone. Mm. So just want to be clear that yes, what he's saying makes a lot of sense. But when you start to go into the genetic markers and the fact that it was targeting specific people and specific mm. genes, genes and genetics, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't apply to everyone. Yeah, but let's keep going. Off. You're turning it yeah. off. Your body cannot defend itself. And it's just collecting. It's just collecting. But it, it also showed me the bizarre state of human psychology that people, if you're presented with what could be a potential solution. You want to believe in it so bad that you're willing to defend these companies that have been the most deceptive companies, proven deceptive, Pro not just deceptive, but deceptive in the way that they are allowed to distribute information. They're allowed to not be transparent about their studies. They could have multiple studies that show a negative cause or a negative effect. And they don't have to. They don't have to release those studies. Why? Because they're bought and sold. Because they. But I think it's an agenda to it. You think so? I think it's an agenda attached to it because they restricted any natural thing like ivermectin. I, Iva means like um, was, it 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 caused. Ivermectin, mectin for the Latin of it. The it was it was worms and it was anti-worms. And what the ivermectin did, it, it causes the worms to have paralysis or parasites to have paralysis because it stops their information from passing. And there's these things called the nodes of Ron Viet between each neuron. There's an axion and there's the, um, there's the axion and oh my God, I just forgot the um, neck that comes off of dendrites. dendrites Those yeah. dendrites and the axions have these these things called nodes of Ron VA where they're not allowed to touch each other. And it transfers potassium and, and chlorine back and forth to each other. Potassium, chlorine, chloride, and, and hydrogen back and forth. Well, in the worm, the ivermectin stops that to where the worms become paralyzed. Mm. So it was an immediate defense against the, the pathogen, but they immediately shut that down and wouldn't and allow also, anybody they, to use it. They showed that it stops viral replication. 
completely in vitro yeah they know that they don't they know that there's a mechanism involved and they try to pretend and then they also try to pretend it's dangerous which is insane and they even got rolling stone magazine on board with it where they they printed an article where they were showing these people that were waiting in line uh for gunshot victims because uh so many people were overdosing on horse dewormer yeah well that was propaganda it was, it was a it was a full-on lie not only that the they were so stupid and clumsy about it that the image that they used this is oklahoma the image that they used was like in the summer in oklahoma and yet everybody's dressed in winter coats <laughs> it was retarded. The whole thing was so stupid, but so obviously coordinated. It was confusing to me how many people were willing to go along with it and how many people were angry at people who didn't go along with it regardless of what they were saying. Even if what they were saying was reasonable, even if what they're saying, especially if you're talking about like Jay Bhattacharya and you know these, these people that were professors at esteemed universities, and they were being silenced, and there was a coordinated effort, coordinated effort to remove their posts from Twitter. This is wild shit, yeah. unprecedented wild shit. And the population was just going along with it. For me, what was fascinating was psychologically, like, do you guys not know about deception? Do you not know about profit motive? Do you not know about the history? Of pharmaceutical drug companies in this country and what they've been able to get away with with the, how many people they've paid the tuskegee experiment oh my god i couldn't understand how black people or people of color were running and trusting the government after what happened to them with the tuskegee experiment and for people that don't know what the tuskegee experiment was in the early 1920s um, a group of government officials came down, doctors, and they went through the black community and they said, there's a sickness in all of you guys and we're going to cure it free of mm -hmm. charge. And they injected mm -hmm. the black population <laughs> yeah. with syphilis and left it untreated for 60 years and just watched how it ravaged the body. For 60 <laughs> years, it wasn't stopped until like... Yeah. So you hear like they're saying the things they've done to our people, and then we're still trusting these people. Come, we need to start waking up now to like... Yeah, many experiments. Yeah. Um, but there's always like levels and levels and levels with everything. So got to learn to read between the lines mm -hmm. as well. 1970s, late 70s, that they stopped the experiment. And I don't even know if they've paid reparations. So, I'm, the, so the government has been using all of these chemical warfare or um, biological warfare against its own citizens Constantly. for a long time. Constantly. There's so, so many instances of it. The so MK that's why Ultra, there's so many instances of it, documented instance of, instances of it. And that's the Tuskegee experience, one of the most horrific. And the fact that it went on until the 70s is just fucking terrifying. But this is just the nature of having that much secrecy and control and profit motive being able to enforce power on people and it's a thing that human beings have always done whenever human beings have gotten into position where they're ruling over others they they are callous and, and evil almost always almost universally there's not one instance of this amazing how much people are they talking about <laughs> their society the six kings man <laughs> yeah. the it free frogs yeah. <laughs> animals and, and insects you know not one of them are responsible for the eradication of any species mm. on this planet mm -hmm. right. not one single creature from history but mankind is responsible Mankind, kind, yeah. <laughs> a kind of a man. Not yeah. everyone can be put in the same boat. And as you say, like, look at the history of the world. Who's the one that's doing all that kind of wrecking creation mm. and the, destruction, the, the, the one manifestation? That's yeah, the one that's wrecking creation is one that is not in tune with nature. Mm. There you go. All right, let's keep going. For the death of, for the extinction of millions. Even when animals are responsible for the extinction, it's because human beings As introduce those animals. But remember, as I said before, when you say animals, you remember some people have got the DNA and the genetics of animals, the porcine, mm. the canine, and Simeon. the simians. Mm. That's where that animal nature comes from. Yeah. So, yeah, you, there's a, a human animal beast that is doing these mm. things into places where they didn't belong, like cats in Australia. Oh, the birds. Yeah, they killed everything. 
or creating so, ligers. Man's mm. interference, and it's based upon their lack of understanding because they don't know how the universe truly works, because their math has been off for so long, because their fundamentals are wrong. Now everything has this expiration and there's a loss to everything when the universe is perfectly balanced, when you utilize it properly. And that's why I wanted to introduce the wave conjugations and the mirror shapes and all of these things, defining the electric field, defining the magnetic field, and the constitution between them being the linchpin. Because the linchpin, as you'll see in a second, this is, it has that same center as that tetrian space. The, diffusion. Mm. Oh. The, the magnetic field, the feminine side, all of this is circular. That's the full expansion. This is the common factor or the, the constitution between the micro and the macro. That's what the linchpin was. And that's what we're about to see in the video. That we're, was it able to come up, Jamie? All right, here we go. And this is rebuilding the planet Saturn. Go ahead. The sound was coming through your speaker, is that what it was? Time for a new laptop? <laughs> you know what's going on. Government they do not want to We're about to kill gravity. We're about to kill their god, gravity. And they don't want that. Here we go. Here we go. From the beginning. I have two groups of vortexes, which are just like tornadoes. Tornadoes, you know, spinning tornadoes that are pointing towards the center. As I highlight this object here, you'll see it. That yellow line. Right, so there's there's a bunch of those in there. There's actually 16 of them, and I'll highlight them all. There. And remember that just so you can kind of see a little bit better. So that's so they're all pointing towards the center, but they're arranged in what we call a linchpin configuration. I'm gonna pretend like you never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. So there's one on the top and then three in groups of three around mm -hmm. that are spaced at 120 degrees apart. And the tilt of these ones on the bottom here is 109.5 degrees in relationship to the top ones. So they're creating this flat space on the top and the bottom. And they're spaced at 120 degrees radially. And then inside the model, is uh, three groups. Jamie, there's two sounds playing simultaneously. No, he's got sound in the background. Oh, that's, well, he's that's doing my it? wife talking. We're in the kitchen, and he's oh, just explaining okay, this over okay, Skype. Okay. This is over oh, okay. Skype. I was confused. <laughs> okay. Up to a thousand pounds, from 2.2 pounds to a thousand pounds. And there's no gravity whatsoever in this model. There's no center attractor. So it's just four Texas and two two magnetic fields, a north and a south polarity, and one harmonic resonance, which is emanating a vibration in the field. In this region here, where these vortexes are pointed, so it kind of just oscillates to give it a little bit of randomness in motion so that the particles will kind of interact and bounce around like smoke or water, waves and water. And then when I hit play, it does it all by itself using physics simulations. So there's no animations, at all in this model and when i play it this is what pops out holy fuck <laughs> how is that holy <laughs> the top, it makes the actual hexagon that nasa has observed on the top of saturn without any gravity and you'll see that the, you get a surface of the sphere on the inside with the heavier particles. So the colors... Are you, are you basically saying, is this saying that you guys can recreate planets? Yes, it, this, is a, this is a particle simulation of the physics involved in making up the planet Saturn. Wow. The, the, like all the... Yeah, so the, the heavier particles are creating the, the red and the green. Can I pause this for a second? Yeah. So is he saying that just by doing these calculations, he created the exact 
form of Saturn, including the rings? Just the exact form of Just it. with the calculations. So you change the angles of incidence that these linchpins, because remember, each one of these has, these are opposing vortices. So there's 12 vortices to this that, that are opposing. So once the angles of incidence change, you can, you change the motion and pressure conditions, you can now change the condition or the crystallization. Yeah. It's this, all... I think this was explained in um, Black Book or Sacred Wisdom of Tahuti when... Yeah, I think it's a sacred... Um, because of Tahuti. When they came down and they had to modify the planet. Oh, no, that is Black Book, yeah. Introduction of the Black Book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah, because when they had to leave and go somewhere else, Wherever you go, you have to then make the atmosphere conducive to mm. for your for your type of being. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, right. So I was saying with the periodic table, now because we have the angles of incidence, material engineering can now separate the space between carbon and nitrogen, or carbon and boron, and and have the same elements of titanium, vanadium, chromium, magnesite, and iron, or nickel, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, gallium, or germanium in those higher octaves. We can do that between silicone and phosphorus or silicone and aluminum. So the transparent aluminum now becomes possible because we can now con control the pressure and change con the, the pressure and motion conditions mm -hmm. where we couldn't do that before because they were going by Cartesian space at 90 degrees and 45 degrees straight lines the Euclidean space that they've made up, this orthogonal or church-like space that they've generated <laughs> because they wanted to promote that cross. That was the basis of all of that. Now we That's open crazy, ourselves man, the cross. up. This yeah. is what happens when four bubbles meet. This is the negative space from when four bubbles are meeting. That's hydrogen. That's why when I went to um, Uganda, I was like, look, look, we have an entirely new system of hydrogen that I, i've got a patent where we where we're able to you won't need projectiles in the guns anymore it's my if you pull up my patent for um projectile uh before we do that though should we finish this oh yeah finish it let's finish, finish, finish this video it. and then jamie and it's could you like also get i want to see a photo of that hexagon on the on the top of the uh, saturn so let's play this. It's just another minute, I think. I feel like we could do an 80 hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, we haven't even got, we're just introducing I know, I know. Which is another super symmetrical system. I'm barely hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. Oh no. It's every time I'm cringing in this video, it's, it's just like the darkness doesn't like to do this. Huh. This is uh, what a multitude said, study science. Yep, you have to study. This is not <laughs> dipping in water religion. You have to definitely do some work. Maybe Use your brain. Computer. Maybe you have a computer, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie, you need a burner computer. Yeah, they don't want their God killed. Gravity has been the thing they've been holding on to from the beginning, and it's just an effect of electricity. It's the draft left over by electricity. Is it working though, Jeremy? It's, re it's re just did like another like false reset, so let me get myself back together here. But we've seen that portion of it, so what I'm saying, um, the... Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's try This is kind of funny. If you, you haven't... Has this ever happened to you no, before? No, no, no. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be paranoid. I mean, I'm not paranoid. I am. I'm a little skeptic. <laughs> he said, I am. If, it's ne if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. If this has never happened to before and it's always happening to me, maybe I'm just bad luck. Am I bad luck? No, here we go. Okay. <laughs> and you'll see that the, you the surface of the sphere on the inside with the heavier particles. So the colors of... Mm. Yes, it, this is a this is a particle simulation that the physics evolved in maybe one of the the guy. Like all the yeah. So the the heavier particles are creating the the red and the
in the freeze and where the hexagon is. And those are the heavy ones creating the shell of the planet. And then the outside are the lighter particles. I think it's important to kind of explain a little bit of this because someone might be listening and watching this thinking, what are you talking about? It's like when you're doing any engineering work and you're going to build something, mm. whether it's a car, a bridge, a tall building, um, you have to use a simulation or an environment. Mm. Even when you're learning how to fly a plane, mm. you have those simulators to, to, to pretend that, because obviously you're dealing with a situation where in real life, Mm. it can cause a lot of damage if mm. you don't get it right. Like, mm. if a bridge is not done properly, it's going to kill people. The same with, you know, if you're flying a plane and you don't know how to fly it properly, you're going to crash and mm. kill people. So what this is in universities, when you're studying, you have simulators or an environment where you can, as long as you put all the mathematics and the information correctly, mm. then it will give you the outcome to fix any problems, like if the wind blew a certain way, would mm. the bridge still be able to hold? And so this is what they're doing. So they're saying, because people hear, oh, I can rebuild Saturn, the planet, and they think you're crazy. But mm. the universe is, has order, the galaxies and, you know, the solar systems and the planets. And what it is, is that our ancestors and the Tharu, they actually are the, the ones that were doing this work. So that even like with the pyramids, it's all mathematics. You had to basically plan it first. This is why an architect would have to do all the drawings, mm -hmm. all the measurements, make sure it's going to be a sound structure mm -hmm. before you actually build the real thing. Yeah, so you have to real. have models. Mm -hmm. And this is a simulation, a model of how the planet, given its atmosphere, given you know, everything that makes it up. So I just wanted to explain that so that people can get it like, <laughs> what we're looking at, we're just looking at a bunch of... Like blueprint before the physical. Yeah, the blueprint yeah. or the black print. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. The counter rotation of the atmosphere of Saturn like we observe scientifically. And the red ones in the middle here are where the magnetic field is strongly polarized at the north and south poles, which gives you aurora borealis. Yeah. I have a question. Now, does this mean what kind of atmosphere um, the planet has as well? Like, exactly. Mm. Terraform. That's right. Because you can try different things out, mm. make sure. Can you breathe on that planet, mm. for example? So that, that kind of goes again to what you're saying about the science, because if, if um, a planet was like m mostly, say, nitrogen, yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. can you breathe it? Because yeah, you yeah. need oxygen mm. and, you know what I mean? Even though, so yeah, life forms will only exist on certain environments with the right atmosphere. So. And, but they, they could manipulate, probably add other chemicals, so it's conducive for them to exactly. survive on the planet. Exactly, exactly. That's why our planet is one of the most sought out planets for extraterrestrials because it's rich in everything, mm. the land, the water, do you know what I mean? And remember that it was terraformed by extraterrestrials. So mm. a lot of the ecology and the trees and the bees and certain things that are here don't actually come from here. Yeah, they, insects, were brought, they were yeah. insects were yeah. brought here to, trees, to, to terraform this mm. planet. This is why when people have certain allergies, yeah. um, as the master has broken down, it's because of these things that have been brought here from somewhere else yeah. and you're grown here and you can be allergic to them. So yeah, that's important. That's all kind of ego based at the center. This is pretty solid evidence that everything we're observing is from the outside coming in. So the entire universe is actually creating these planets hmm. from the outside in, from space itself, the pressures. Turning the ray, 
You can stop it. Now, what, so, go to that edge. Like, if you picture dropping a pebble into um, a, a pond mm -hmm. or a pool, everything expands in these, these longitudinal waves, right. perfect spheres, unless there's something else in there. But when it hits the edge, it all starts bouncing its way back. And when it meets, when these returning waves meet expanding waves, that's when we get our first geometry. So this is the proof that the universe is not infinite, but finite. Because you could not have shape without the returning waves, and the ret waves would not return unless it was bouncing off of the edge of something. Look mm. how strange that is. Yep. Bingo. Mm. Look how strange that the hexagon on the top of, the s of Saturn is. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, that's Saturn, right? Yep, and yeah. then we don't even... And he, that is so crazy. He explains exactly how he built it, all the angles of incidence, all the, the pressure systems that he used, all of that is so it can be a repeated experiment. But they've ignored this. This is in the beginning of my book. You go to my book, that's the first page on there. Before you even open it up, I've got this, and we rebuilt the, the Milky Way galaxy the same way, and it predicts the star arrangement better than NASA does. And this is without dark matter, this is without dark energy, this is without the standard models. So is dark matter dark, or dark energy, are they primarily theoretical? That's all theoretical. They've never, they've never witnessed it, and we couldn't prove that Michelson-Morley experiment that, it, that they did in 1887, which said that there was no effect because they tried to move a table around and change the angle of incidence for light to see if the light changed when you move the table. The experiment is like this. The mental experiment is like this. If you're going to experiment, you have an A structure and you have an idea of how A behaves and you have a thought that if you put A in a particular w situation, it's going to turn into B. So let's picture it hypothetically like you have a bar that's maybe six inches long of iron. And you say, okay, well, I think if it goes into the freezer that it's going to get shorter. So you're supposed to have two exact bars six inches out and leave one outside of the refrigerator, freezer, and put one in the fridge or freezer. And then you compare them after you, you see it. So A over X is equal to B over, to R times B over X. R is the result or the change between them. B is the change that occurs. R, R is what faction or the X that you use in order to get back to A or to convert it to B. What they did with the Michelson-Morley experiment because they could not get out of the ether. They couldn't step outside of the ether because it's everything around mm, yep. <laughs> so, them. It tells a difference whether they saw no result, no change. So they assumed there was a void that there was no ether there. And that's when particle physics took off. Lorenz, in, in, <laughs> Lorenz, uh, uh, yeah. right, as the master teacher said that, they didn't, they didn't have instruments to detect it. That's at right, the at the time. And even now, people are still debating it. And we've got the scroll there, natural ether energy, that goes in detail about it. But even when you go into, when they're talking about the, um, the hydrogen in, breaking down into quarks, seals, bias, mm -hmm. They still haven't recognized bias yet, I don't think. No, they have, because okay. biops is just a biapature, isn't it? Because oh, as, 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 yeah. but as, as you're subdividing the atom, mm -hmm. it keeps subdividing. And that's why with CERN, he was explaining CERN, they keep doing the experiment because they want to keep subdividing. But as he said, you can put a hole in the fabric of space but, and yeah. open up, do you know what I mean? Pull tools, pull holes, yeah. and then beans come yeah. through. But yeah, we've got uh, the scroll natural ether energy. Um, Light and fire g goes into that as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's many scrolls. Again, don't take our word for it. Check it out. So this is that everybody loved. Entered a, a paper in 1904 where he was continually explaining the ether the same way that Maxwell, all of his theories came off of there being an ether, but he was still limited by Newtonian laws and the column force of opposites attracting when it's the positive is the things that are alike that attract, but he believed that the ether was still and space was flat. Oh. Oh. And so space-time or Einstein relativity came as a result of them taking the ether away. That was and important what he said about the opposite attracting um, when it's really, like he said, is um, the op is the po like I said the positives will mm. attract and the 
negatives will attract, Talking. but not the opposites, as in positive yeah. and negative mm. attracting, because what they're trying to say is that th that like and like will repel. Mm. But that's a spell, because that's what tries to keep us away or, from each other by coming together, mm. because, but then the programming is what is used to keep you apart, because yeah. naturally you would automatically yeah. come together and yeah. attract. Here's we've walked down this particle physics, phys physics world that's all theoretical, and here I've patented these wave mm. conjugations that is the ether, is the contraction of the ether and the expansion of it. And on top of that, the proof of it was I've been able to build new industries from it. If you go to, um, I want to introduce the linchpin, if okay. I can. With all of the talk, can you, before we do that, can you tell me how a planet is formed under this theory? So you have a sun, and how does the sun give birth to these planets? The same way we defecate and have gas, like mm -hmm. Jupiter, mm -hmm. that, that, that red spot on Jupiter, mm -hmm. that's spinning on it, that's mm -hmm. going to become a moon. It may take a, a billion or two billion years. That will ultimately become a moon off of Jupiter. Where is it? Right at the equator. Where do we discharge at? Right at our equator. And then it will rotate its way around and slowly See, be pushed out. See, again, that can sound like funny, isn't it? Mm. People are just going like defecating. But it's really saying that something comes out of something and then because of the gravitational pull on it, mm -hmm. it, it then gets stuck somewhere, then it starts to swirl and then, you know, f around, go around and around. And over time, it's kind of like forming into a ball. Yeah, it tracks up a... Yeah, that's right. Mm. And then it's caught within that, you know what I mean, gravitational pull of the bigger mass, and mm. then it starts to orbit. So, yeah, he's explaining. But people by can laugh at this, but it's real. Of, of, well, by Jupiter. So like coronal yeah. mass ejections. There you go. Coronal mass ejections. So some kind of ejection of matter leaves the sun and over billions and billions of years, enough of it collects and there's enough of a force to where ultimately that coalescing idea that they have, those are, that's where it happens. It's not from materials that's just been left over from the Big Bang. You know, like Rupert Sheldrick says, you know, the physicists of today ask for, you give us one miracle yeah. and, you know, show yeah. us how everything came from nothing and we'll explain everything else. And they can't explain everything else. They can't un explain the morphic resonance that's happening between things. Like right now, because I've discovered these wave conjugations, morphic re re resonance mm. on the planet has been thinking about it will now have ideas concerning, but not just us, but all humanoids throughout the entire universe will now get that same resonance and be able to apply it like the experiments with the rats. Right. You teach a rat something here in London and then in New York you find the rats are doing the same thing. Right. Spontaneously. Because and the this is what they've done with us. We're all connected on this ether and that waveform is, that's the consciousness. We are all just one great being. Yeah. You know, that's what they forget. We're not separate. We're all, the universe is probably one cell inside of some super organism. Right. And we're just yeah. little, little who, you know, yeah. little who's like, <laughs> like, like Horton hears a who. Yeah, did you ever watch Horton? And that's a and cartoon a with a spec. It's quite it. interesting. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Everything is just one. Because as you, as, as, you, as you zoom out of things, you see the interconnection between them. So, for example, the ant, they're so tiny. Mm. If you were to magnify and go into their world, mm. there are things that are more tiny than them yeah, yeah, and yeah, tiny yeah. and yeah. tiny. And yeah. then everything magnifying <laughs> back outwards, then looking at us as a speck in mm. the cosmos, it's like we are all interconnected, but at different levels or different vibrations or different frequencies. I don't know if this one has anything to do with well, Canada. Yes. I think it was in the tablets. Master T said there are beings whose sparks from the source could destroy entire universes. Who's what from the? the, the in, I, think, I think it was in the tablet. Yeah. This, he was talking about beings, the sparks from their swords could destroy 
garlic. Oh garlic. yeah, yeah. Okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It depends how big you are. Um, mm. The movie Ant Ant Man goes into that because they're dealing with the quantum realm yeah, yeah, and yeah, how yeah. you can replicate something entire universe mm. into a tiny little ball, mm. and it's the same with us. Like every cell in our brains or the neurons, they, they can replicate the entire yeah, brain, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So yeah, um, quantum, the quantum realm is real. That's what Jesus was talking about. That's, that's, what, that's what, you know, Buddha was talking about. It's, it's recognizing the divinity in you. What I did as a child, I said, I'm going to, instead of waiting for the Messiah to show up, what if everybody picked up their torture stake and behaved and did the things that they had expected the Messiah to do? Mm -hmm. What if everybody just for one day walked around and behaved as if they were God himself and did the things that they would expect the Creator? And we know God can't just be a male because no man can produce a child without a female. Everything <laughs> Have we not said this? Go back and watch our first video. Yeah, God numbers and the universe explain because XX chromosome and the Y is a defective X. We've and even got an actual fact, isn't it? Who was God, male or female? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going back, what, years. So, yeah, this is, this is good. Let's keep going. Universe, as above, so below, like Billy Carson always talks about, you can't, everything has an equal and opposite. Yeah, so you know that um, Billy Carson has also been on the Joe Rogan. We're going to have to do a, yeah. Yeah, a reaction to that one yeah, as well, yeah. so that would be interesting. <laughs> Us to mate. Mating is a big part of what we do. The carb, the, um, the boron mates with nitrogen, and that's how the carbon happens. Everything inside of us, all our cells, they're mating. Just said There's that. a relationship going mm. on in it. Everything's alive. There is no death, but that the Bible talked about a mechanistic world. God took dirt and blew into it the breath of life, and it came to life. But if you look at the Brownian effect, what is breathing going from positive to negative? <laughs> That's another point as well. Like, they using that to say that was the first creation, in it? Because the dirt, dirt formed man. Mm. But there's life in the dirt. In the dirt. And like I was just saying, <laughs> when you zoom into the, the bacteria and the mm. microorganisms have got life. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that means life was already there. <laughs> They see all these, even the plastic that makes these things up are still going from, it's still, it's still, it's still carbon po um, polarizing from positive mm. to negative. Mm. Po breathing in, breathing Bring out. It. It's just under a different state of matter, but there is no death. There's no death. We are all, everything's eternal. And once we forget, well, once we get rid of the idea of okay, oh, transformation into another state of mm -hmm. existence, you know, then they don't have any grafts over you anymore. And, and to be free, the truth will set you free. <laughs> you know, that's why I was like, okay, well, if I have to, if this truth caused me this lifetime, then wonderful, I've accomplished what I needed to do. Because I think in the previous lifetime, I was supposed to do these things and I didn't. And that's why it's been so hard for me. Is it 24 to 20, so 24 to 20, yeah. Because <laughs> so yeah. you felt like that, like from the womb. From the womb, mm. I had so to get you this felt thing. like you had these things that you didn't get out in a previous lifetime, and now you feel like an unstoppable urge. Mm. I have to. I have to at all costs. So can I go, but I would love to talk more about this, but I don't want to lose this thought. So I want to go back to the formation of planets. So under this theory, these stars eject matter, and over time, this matter will achieve a certain amount of distance from the sun. Short distance. Look at Mercury. Yeah. Mercury isn't that mm. far from it. Right. Mm. The, it kind of makes sense. And then over time, it'll eventually get further and further out. The sun will continue to make more and more planets over an imperceptible amount of time. We won't be able to measure it. It's for, in our, our world, We'll see it, it appears static, just like plants appear static to yes. us. But if you ever watch a, uh, one of those the motion capture- The secret life of plants. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, plants are moving and touching each other and they're just doing it at a pace that our brain can't handle. A different temporal dimension. Yes, so the mm -hmm. sun is creating planets, but it's doing so at a pace that our mind can't really wrap around. So we wanna think there's just 
matter and that it's in it's flying through space and it's, it's in collects, collects via gravity and the more mass the more gravity it, it's supposed to but look at the take a balloon another mm -hmm. thing that kills gravity gravity is supposed to be the greater the mass is the greater the attractor you take a balloon you rub it on your leg you put it over the ground Watch the dust particles jump off the ground, off this big mass called the Earth, and jump onto that balloon. Because why? Electricity is 137 times stronger than the pull of gravity or the effects of the so-called gravity. Mm. It's the electric mm. force mm. that's the attractive force. It's the electric force that tightens everything together as the masculine and then the dividing force is the radiative force, the magnetic field. It p ablates and pushes everything out. And then they collect together again. But where these things meet, at the proper angles of incidence, like the Birkeland currents talked about, those plasma currents talked about, those angles of incidence is at 120 degrees when it converts it back into electricity and it will keep collecting and coming and making life. The planet isn't a dead thing. It didn't just happen to come together. That's just the process by which it was given life. It's alive. And it's screaming. It thought we were going to be beneficial to it. And now it's trying to kill us. It's now it, it needs to scratch itself mm -hmm. and get rid of us because That's we are too dangerous. Right. Because we are using antiquated fundamentals. And like people say, well, what business do you have coming in here talking about science and all that? You're an actor. You want to know what my first patent was? The entire AR, VR world was built off of my first patent that was abandoned because I paid $260,000 for the worldwide patent. But then my agents kept, not the, my, my lawyers kept sending me um, these maintenance fees and annuities. And I'm like, these folks are just trying to shake me down. I'm not going to pay this. Well, a year later... If you will pull up my World of Windows patent, I think it's one of the first patents up there, I want you to see where your AR, VR world came from. And you look at the list of companies that has cited, and didn't just cite it, they built their entire AR, VR world off of my World of Windows patent. Can you pull that up, Jamie? If, oh, the computer. Yeah, it's the very, um, not that one. Not that one, not that one. It's, yeah, that's the propulsion patent. Eight, no, no, no. That's all you have, huh? Really? This is something else they try to, like, kind you, of you can go play it down because they're saying, Terry's obviously, Lynchkin, the Lynchkin, Microsoft and yeah. Apple and all these big this companies what, uh, this use this pattern for their VR stuff. Mm. Um, people are saying, like, exactly. yeah, whatever, yeah. Terrence. This is online. This, this is online. Text me that link and I'll just send it to you. Yeah. You got it? You got it. Okay. So merging virtual reality. It says merging virtual reality with reality. Go down. Patents and files. The very first one. Tap on that. So you go look over to, you'll see my name, inventor, Terrence Deshaun Howard. Worldwide application, and let's just read the abstract just so they don't. System and method for merging virtual reality and reality. Scroll it so I can see it. Uh, to provide an enhanced sensory experience. A system and method of merging virtual reality sensory detail from a remote site into a room environment at a local site. The so system preferably includes at least one image server, a plurality of image collection devices, a display system compromising display devices, a control unit digital processor, and a viewer position detector. The control unit preferably receives the viewer position information and transmits instructions to the digital processor. The digital processor preferably processes source data representing an aggregated flow, uh, aggregated field of view from the image capturing devices in accordance with the instructions received from the control unit and outputs the refined data representing a desired display view to be displayed on one or more display devices wherein the viewer position detector dynamically determines the position of the viewer in the room environment and changes the desired display view corresponding to position changes of the viewer. Is that like see, a hologram or something? Look, look, look at the inventor. No, he was just explaining how, yeah. I, how virtual reality, you know, like um, you know, the meta device where you put them on and you can like 
interact in a virtual yeah. world. Yeah, but that'd be like a hologram, wouldn't it? No. No, no, I mean, not really, because, let me stop. So you're saying that, well, with a hologram, it's like you're, Holy you're taking me. something, breaking it down, and then rebuilding it somewhere else, isn't mm, it? Mm, mm. Yeah, I mean, there's similarities, but, mm. yeah. Tap on there and look at all the companies. And if you look at the patent, these companies have all earned, they have multi billion dollar companies they built off of my patent. Just roll through Sony, Microsoft, Amazon, Hewlett Packard. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This IBM, crazy. and it's still making money. This patent has earned over $7 trillion. And you didn't get it. And I haven't gotten a penny of it. When they did all of the uh, Black Lives Matter, like let Raytheon Company, <laughs> and IBM, IBM, if you... Crazy. There's, and it still has another nine years. Uh -huh. Now there's eight years in which I would be making money off it, but what they didn't know is this they is didn't understand is how is this really supposed to work. So they've just been taking this gun and been using it as a bat. <laughs> and if they wanted to know, I could show them how it really, really works. But this is proof that my stuff is legit. Is legit. So let me ask you this before we stray away from this too much. The, the concept of gravity. So if, if it's all electricity that's mm -hmm. causing these forces and it's all outside in, when the Saturn V rocket is escaping Earth's atmosphere, what is it fighting against? What that's fighting against is the rotation. Remember, there's a centripetal spin that's taking place with the Earth. Right. And there's an electrical field that's generated from that. That's that centripetal spin that holds things inside. Mm -hmm. That's what it's fighting against. That's that electric that's field. That's in mind compatibility, we're scientific calling forces. We're calling it yeah, so, so centripetal and centripetal is forces. Just the effect of the electric field and gra and the electric field is balanced by the, the radiative field. And the more mass something has, the more it gets pulled. The greater electric potential it has. Mm. You know, the so the more the tighter the something waves is, are. the heavier it is. The, the waves are tighter. Yeah. Electricity can now it doesn't have to jump over anything. And as I showed you with some of the pieces, as long as they're close together then you don't have the magnetic field that forms, that, that discharge, because they're able to, to stay south, northeasterly in their direction. They're not forced to go southwesterly and spin mm. out. Either you're spinning to the right or spinning to the left. That's, it, that's the only two directions mm. in the universe. Spinning to the right is northeastern, that's, that's electric. If it's spinning to the left, mm. it's magnetic, mm. and it's expanding out. It mm. contracts in fifths, and expands in sixes. Expansion and, so and contraction, yeah. what I want yeah. to do is invite Neil deGrasse and David Tong or any astrophysicist, any chemist, any, any, anyone yeah. in any field of science. See, that's what the beauty about what he's saying, because some people try and say, oh, you're just an actor, you don't know what you're talking mm -hmm. about. But he's literally saying, I'll invite everyone. Do you know what I mean? Let's take it further from yeah, where I am. Yeah, yeah. And another thing he says, I remember the master teacher, um, Dr. York, Malachi York, saying about magnetism, that mm. um, it, magnetism is not something in the metal, it's something that the metal can conduct. Mm -hmm. So that kind of ties in with, with what Terence is saying. So, yeah, it's making a lot of sense. To sit down with me and examine these patterns, mm. examine the super symmetrical systems that I've developed. But I want to show you Lynchpin now. Here I've invented, here I'm an Oscar-nominated actor <laughs> that is known all around the world, face recognition, vocal recognition, all around the world. I've invented a new form of flight, tangential flight, the ability to fly around your own center of mass, something they've never been able to do. And you don't hear anything about it. And it's yeah, that, bonding. If you could... That is, that's the same thing we keep saying, like, no one is saying, let's hear from this man that calls himself an extraterrestrial mm. that's on this planet, that has given all this information and can give you answers to anything and mm. everything you ask for. 
Why don't you hear about it on t on, mm. t on CNN or the TV? Yeah, don't like it. You don't exist. Like it don't exist. Yeah. But it's all right. Go to Time will show. What, um, mm -hmm. Jonathan Davis sent over. He's one of the other programmers that work with us. Explain and, what it does. Explain when you say flight. What do you mean? Tangential flight. What do you mean by that? It means right now, fixed wing aircraft. You can right. go in four degrees of direction. It go up, down. You know, some can go forwards and back, you know, right. backwards and right. right to left. But this is able to spin around its own center of mass. Completely spin around its own center of mass, something they've never, people are able to do it by falling, but this is a sustained system mm. that's able to go around. I sent that, that other video to you. Um, but their ability, because this is geometry of hydrogen, any bond that hydrogen can make, linchpin can make and what they're basically doing is building a periodic table in front of you if you play um four of them coming together it's four like 30 second videos you know i'll explain it out but you'll see how these things align themselves well this is the swarm and they're all following this queen as a colony and they'll do everything that that she's doing there's go to the very first video, there's four in a row on it. Oh, that's how it came up to you. Well, let's see which one this is. This is four of them that's going to come together to pick up a barrel. And, and what's powering them? Um, right now, they're, we're, we're going to use hydrogen fuel cells. But I have another system, you know, that I was going to talk about in a second. But um, it's an unlimited source of power. <laughs> but so hydrogen fuel cells, or you can use lithium batteries. And they're present. so. The, how are they moving? Like, what's is the, what are those? Is is that like a, are those like propellers? Yeah, those are props. But okay. But that right there, what we have right there is, um, uh, it's it's a it's a pitch. Da, 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 uh, wow, uh, collective pitch. So instead of the props having to turn themselves around, mm -hmm. in, instead of all the props having to turn themselves around to stop and turn right. in the opposite direction, like they just switch the direction. They just, oh. they just, so it's a collective pitch and it changes. And so now instead of going up, you're going down, but now five of them will come together and watch what the five does with, so this is the end of cranes. <laughs> This is the, the end of cranes. Mm. And how many is necessary? And they can, since this is the, this is the fractal, they can be as small as, as a nanoparticle or they can be as large as the universe because <laughs> the entire universe comes down to this. So I was trying to reach out to Elon Musk. I was trying to reach out to Jeff Bezos. I was trying, because my main goal was I was building these to clean up the upper atmosphere, all of that debris that's up there, and ultimately to mine the asteroid, the, belt. The asteroid belt. Because you can't go out there. They keep talking about going out there. That's like you try and go that far away. That's like us... That's like taking a starfish from the bottom of the ocean and bringing it up to where we are. Everything expands. The nitrogen expands too much. That animal dies. You take us outside where Mars is, nitrogen has expanded so much more. The hydrogen has expanded so much more that you will never be able to, you won't even have a spaceship or, or a, a suit on that's strong enough to keep your body together and you will never be able to come back to 93 million miles away from the sun because everything will have expanded and you will expand to the point of vacuity mm. and explode out. So trying to send a man out to Mars is like trying to send a man to live on Venus. The pressure is too tight near Venus. We will get crushed in Into a second. The sphere. It's like being pushed mm. to the bottom of the ocean immediately. You will get crushed in immediately. The pressure conditions change as we move from the sun. But science mm -hmm. have neglected that because they've said it's a void there. And they don't account for that higher pressure condition, but they found that radioactive decay is, is quicker, closer to the sun, near Venus. 
Why? Because the pressure condition, that electric field and those magnetic fields are pushing on each other, causing it to turn back into an electric force in comparison to further away. When the sun, when the earth is closer to the sun, they found that radioactive decay is quicker than when it's further away from the sun. Is that by accident? Or is it just because of the change of pressure conditions? Mm -hmm. So us talking about going out, when my wife said on the thing, are we gonna be able to put people on Saturn? No. See, again, that's, that's where um, the master explained about how our planet orbiting the sun is, is kind of an elliptical shape, isn't mm -hmm. it? So when it's at the furthest points away, that's when it's 93 million miles, miles away. Yeah. And then when it's on the other two sides, where it's closer, it's 91 so, million miles oh. away. So it's a average in between 91 and 93. It's, 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 it's too, too nebulous. It's expanded out too far. Our pressure, can, we would have to have a suit so strong and powerful in order for us to do that. But Lynchpin is able to make it out there because we have another propulsion system that we've put together where I'm able to take water and put it into a small change. And this patent has been granted. It's um, the propulsion um, projectile. And we patented it as a gun because I didn't want anybody else to be able to use it like a gun. But it's basically lightning in the bottle. We take mm. water and we put it inside of a small chamber based on the wave conjugations that I have and the angles of incidence. And we run an electric charge through a small amount of water. The water is not able to expand into gas like it wants to because it's locked into the pressure condition. So immediately it converts into plasma. And it, ha it converts the gas dimension into a power dimension. So it's lightning out of the barrel just wow. from water. And there's no end like which is a real lightning gun. Like yeah. Quake. Yes. So, and the patent's been granted. The, typically, you're limited to how much charge you can put inside of a cartridge. And, you know, you have to get more and more charge or, or, or explosive in there to get something out. But with, with electricity, you could send a thousand volts oh. or a million volts through the same aperture. <laughs> and that water is incompressible. And so it's just going to react and immediately it converts into a plasma. And so it's, we can project anything into space. All of that has been accomplished <laughs> and it's ignored. So it can act as a propulsion system for rockets as rockets, well? Rockets, anything, and in space. And that's the whole point for it to, because there's just nothing but that, but moisture and that collected, mm -hmm. and ice the hydrogen there. So there. you mm. can now, the linchpins can go all the way past Mars, attach themselves to whatever asteroid, mine that asteroid, bring it back, and have in one of the Lagrange areas. So for the audience out there, Lagrange areas are those areas. The master broke this down that's already. Where the ships <laughs> that's where the ships them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is uh, <laughs> the fact that it's not a constant. It could not be a constant because things weigh heavier on the poles of the Earth than it does on the surface of the poles mm -hmm. than it does at the equator. They're heavier at the poles than they are at the equator. And the further away from the Earth you go, the less it goes. So there's no consistency about gravity. It is not a constant. It is a coefficient, and it's more so just an effect. And it's the same thing with the Planck scale. You look at the Planck scale or the Planck length or the Planck, Planck weight, all of those things are based upon gravity, and they're supposed to occur at 10 to the 15th, 10 to the minus 15th, the Planck scale, but these, but at 10 to the minus 35 is where the proton and all of that behaves. They have gravity inside of there as if it's affecting it, but they've already said that at a, at a small molecular level, you know, at the nuclear level, gravity is ha has no effect. So how is that part of a Planck scale? You know, there's a guy, um, Fleming, that talks a lot about this. But you take that, you look at the speed of light. Is that a constant? You know, in 1928, they saw that there was different fluctuations between 1928 and 1948 between the speed of light. And then out of nowhere, and Rupert Sheldrake talks about this, out of nowhere, they began to be a constant again. 
where there were fluctuations before and he asked one of the professors about it and he said, oh, it, it, it's a thing that, that we call um, intellectual phase locking where when they get different <laughs> measurements for the speed of light, all of the scientists will average, it, I, average mm, it out mm. to one thing instead of showing the fluctuations in it. Oh, wow. It's called intellectual phase locking. It's not so also fuzzy. because of the crude methods of measurement that they have no. available? No, they the name they intellectual phase light, locking. The speed of light since <laughs> Galileo <laughs> was measuring IO. We say so, measure. so that's what it is. <laughs> and that's how they came up with the speed of light was how he watched IO going uh, around Jupiter and saw that there was a difference in how the light behaved. And they've been able to get very close measurements to what they thought was the speed of light. But it's never been a constant because it changes depending upon the medium it's going through. Oh. Mm. So there's no constant there, but they have that as part of the Planck scale. But the linchpin, the wave conjugations, the tetrian, it's the end of, it's the end of Planck. It's the end of Schrodinger's equation. It's the end of, uh, of, of um, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And I'm ready to, to have the debate <laughs> at any university. <laughs> Anytime they want to. It's, but they why, why hasn't anyone taken them up on that? I mean, like, you would think. Yeah. I mean, you see people putting YouTube videos and saying that he's bonkers and all this kind of stuff, but he's being professional saying, let's sit down, let's, mm. you know, all the brains, let's sit down, let's use any university. We'll see. Let's see if they will actually... Um, Take him up on I it. think from when Oxford tried to do a move yeah a little him. move a little dirty <laughs> move on him yeah so it's like they know he's got the answers yeah yeah but we'll see mm. have no comeback for it because I have four super symmetrical systems and that's the thing about geometry geometry is its own proof supersymmetry is its own proof whereas equations mm. anybody can have an equation mm. and only certain people can try and understand it and it can be fudged. <laughs> they, have an yeah. they, they renormalize it. That's why Dyson left the whole group back in the 1940s when they were talking about quantum electrodynamics. And Feynman said it himself, you know, with this renormalization. You know, is that real physics? Is this real <laughs> math? All of them recognize that this is fudging because they had went the wrong direction by taking the ether out of out the there. equation. And now I have yeah. proof of the ether and how it behaves. Wow. Nine ether, baby. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of getting it, and you're doing a great job explaining it. But if you're right, that really changes everything. Everything. And it accounts for why physics kind of hits a stalling point. They've been going in the wrong direction. 96% of physics is unknown matter that they've had to make up to account for it. And we were able to build Saturn without that. Out. We were able to show the extent. The, the, it also has a hexagon, it's very bizarre. The age of the universe, you can wind up all of the satellites, all of the, the planets in every solar system and can wind up and get back to the real age of our universe. Would be gaz gazillion, gazillions of years based upon this drift. If you walk away from that Big Bang or special relativity, because that was the cause of all that. Black holes came from the thought of, of gravity going crazy. When gravity goes crazy, you know, light won't even be able to escape from it because light was thought as moving as a, good, as a particular constant. Right. We've just killed that. What do you think a black hole is? It doesn't exist. Mm. There, there aren't black holes. There's no spot where the unit where energy goes in and never comes back out. There's no place in the universe where, where, where um, the the information paradox occurs, where there isn't a balance. Something gets contracted and never comes out. That's not how the universe behaves. It comes in and it goes, it goes out. out. When Newton said that the that gravity pulls down, yes. hits at, with that apple. Yes, the apple was attracted to light conditions on the earth. It was attracted to light conditions. If he had spent another week or two weeks watching that apple, he would have watched the gases go right back up to where they were equalized. This is what I'm saying. It's like, this is, the master brought this down. Like, 
you you ha you can have something that's hot, mm. but it, it can get to a point where it becomes cold mm -hmm. because you, it's a cycle, mm. you know, so you can go left, 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 but eventually you're going to come out of the right, mm. do you know what I mean? Because it, it's just the extreme. So a black hole, you can go in, but then you'll have to come out of the mm. other end somewhere. So that's what he's actually explaining. It's like you need the two sides. You can't just take in and then never come out like, because yeah. if you keep taking in, it's going to expand, mm. isn't it? Where's all the stuff that's mm. going in? holding then so yeah he actually makes sense everything if it comes this way it has to go this way you breathe in you breathe out it's filling mm -hmm. in or, or pouring out so what do you think they're detecting when they're detecting black holes with that shift that they're talking about mm -hmm. that's that's the tornado remember the two the um there's all these the master explained it that with the black hole the two universes yeah one day in one way and, and, the, one and they come to get the, the, the mm. rims that's what we were saying that the universes are finite because at the rim it's hitting something else mm. and and you know you're coming together and that's the the, the space between the two yeah. is what's called they're calling it that around a vortice so a collection of larger vortices is going to have the same thing that's happening at the center of the galaxy is happening at the, in the center of a hurricane it's happening in your toilet still mm. Which is why the galaxy is a circular and disk in the first place. Mm. Everything, ev all motions expressed in waves, all waves are expects, expressed in curves. That's what I mean about the circular, because if you remember how the master ex explains in the um, science of creation, mm -hmm. where you would have, like if you drew a circle, mm -hmm. I think I explained this in one of the TikTok videos, it's like, you know the point where you started to draw the circle from yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it will meet back up there but mm. no one else will know yeah, yeah. so when you go cold 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 you're going to get to a point where it becomes hot then you go hot 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 and it gets to a point where it becomes cold mm. and then it just forms the cycle but the bit where it starts from and goes and moves from one to the other only the person who actually um Great. started it will know, yeah. will know where, yeah, the secret it always makes fun. So because of the concept of gravity, and because of the concept of this event horizon, this super it. point of gravity, this infinite point that light can't even escape, that this exists because of the of their theory math. of gravity. And their math. Remember, yeah. they have a thing called zero. They, they, they go from one to zero to right. negative one. There is no zero to even think zero. So do you think that zero is a concept that came along with currency? It should be attached to currency in that regard because in physics, there is, it's either nothing remains still. There's nothing still in the universe. There's nothing that doesn't have motion right. because everything is connected. So if one thing is still, everything that's connected to it has to be still. There mm -hmm. can never be one thing still. So as electricity tries to get to its, its balanced state, right when it gets there, magnetism takes over and it pushes over. So there's this pendulum. There and go. as soon as it gets to this state, it bounces off that other noble gas and it makes its way all the way back over here and it's about to have equanimity and then it gets pulled back into the other direction. Mm -hmm. And that's the breathing in and breathing out and the pendulum effect that we've all observed in natural phenomena mm -hmm. in the universe. And that's a part of everything. Everything behaves that way. Every one of our cells every, comes down to our, our cells are made up of water. Mostly water, 80%, 90% water somewhere. Water is hydrogen. Hydrogen has 12 vortices. That's behaving with it. 12 opposing vortices. So what, in your model, what happens to these suns when they supernova? Everything gets old and dies. Everything gets old and dies. And does everything recompress? It has to. So I'm saying. You breathe out, what happens to that air? You, yeah, you can't just breathe in all the time. You have to let it out. Would this be the universe mm. itself? Would it be galaxies? Would it be... Everything. Everything. Behaves the same way. So as the sun expands and projects and ejects particles, they expand, they f go further and further from the sun, and at a certain point, they come back. Well, at a certain point, what do they hit? There's other expanding mm. stars and... There you and, go. And... Um, so like waves colliding. Yes, and from the other, from the other, from the other star systems, they have an expanding. What is the the thing? The solar wind. They have expanding solar winds. Mm -hmm. So when they meet our our plat our star, 
meets a, the solar wind from another star at that end of that spot. Uh, yep. Now there's two pressure conditions. So you have another Lagrange spot that's happening there. That's when those waves start coming back, but they get hit and they, if they hit at 120 degrees, because that's how the universe is arranged, now these things become electric. So they, instead of coming from the planar side and expanding out of the equator, they now come back up from the northern and southern parts. So does this account for stellar nurseries? Yes. All of these things are just pressure conditions hitting each other. And they're causing that. That's where the Birkeland currents are running through, those higher electrical fields. But everything in the universe is just electricity. And we call it magnetism when it's devitalized, but it's still electricity. We call it the, the radiative side, it's the feminine side. Mm -hmm. And the, the contractive side is the positive, masculine side. There, it's a balance, and it's never been, it's never been anything but that balance. And we've complicated it with a lie. If you're right, so many people are wrong. <laughs> Everyone's wrong. Oh, well, the universe, and that's, the, and that's the point. Me up. <laughs> and I have the that's what people do. Yeah. We have to stop that. But it's like. It's like the Bible, isn't it? You have to throw it away. Mm. If it, in the sense that, okay, you've got people believing this is how it went. And then now it's like we have to go back and tell everyone we were wrong. Mm. So like, the chaos that that will cause, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's a lot of work. That's why they don't want to admit to the fact that um, extraterrestrials really, because it's not mentioned in their Bible, yeah. the Quran, the Torah. Well, it actually is, it is but they don't want to tell the masses yeah. that it is yeah. because how can you say you're a Christian, for example, and then say there was a war in the heavens mm. and then Michael and, you know, his angels fought against the dragon and his angels and then they were cast down here. So mm. where, where was that taking place? Mm. You know, so, but anyway, let's not <laughs> go digress into the religion. <laughs> Something different, but none of them have 97 paths. None of them have introduced a new form of flight with unlimited mid-air bonding. None of them have discovered four super symmetrical systems. This is what we've done. This is what the collective is able to do when you put yourself into the divine space. Because that spirit is waiting. It's just like, okay, are you gonna make yourself available for it? So let me ask you this. If, you, if I had a magic wand and uh, I allowed you to uh, not just show this, but uh, allowed all of these people that have these opposing ideas you you debate them you duke it out you emerge victorious okay with this magic wand and now people go just listen to Terrence what do we do well then once we now we write new new ask new axioms and new postulates based off the real wave conjugations now we adjust our understanding of our physics to fit natural phenomena. And then we are in balance with it and we have to let go of the idea of this currency. We're the only creatures in the known universe that uses currency, mm. that uses an indirect form of payment instead of a direct exchange. We have to get past that point and that's the hard thing mm. because this entire world is one of them mm. and that's where the one times one equaling two came into its, into its real birth. Well, the thing about currencies, it's connected um, to technological innovation because of this uh, unlimited potential for growth. And when you have an unlimited potential for growth, you have people that are extremely motivated to make massive amounts of money and they innovate in a very high way. And then they also implement that innovation in the form of technology. But their technology is, is antiquated con to, compared to mine. There's no government on this planet that has the technology that I have or can outdo what I have because you can't outdo the fractal. How many people have you, I know you spoke at Oxford about this, but you didn't speak. Yeah, they, no, about, they didn't. Oxford did something that, I, that broke my heart. Five minutes before the presentation, they wouldn't allow me to have a screen and show, and show my proof. Why? Oh, the computer was down. And I was like, well, you can use my computer. No, we have sensitive things attached to it. You know, I just need the projector. I don't need anything else. Because they just, they didn't want me to go and talk about this. Mm. And that's why I went out there and said, hey, pull out your calculator. 
<laughs> I talked about acting for a couple mm -hmm. minutes, for 20 minutes, and then I was like, pull out your calculator, and I want you to enter the square root of two in there, and I, let's walk through mm -hmm. this loop that is the square root of two. I was like, let's walk through this, where the square root of two cubed is the same value as the square root of two times two. And then when you divide it by two and cube it again, you get back to the, you take the square root of two, 1.414213562373095. You cube it, it's 2.828427121746190. Divide it by two, it get back to 1.414. Cube it again, it's back to 2.828. Divide it by two, back to 1.414. Here we're making, mm -hmm. here we're taking one, two, three big steps. We're dividing it by two and we get back to the same value as we had in the very beginning. That's a spell, That's a loop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> two x, which is equal to x plus x. That's an, an unnatural equation. Mm -hmm. And every quantum, quantum mechanics and quantum physics equation has that square root of two in there. We've been living in this lie, this fostered lie for so long. Because and, and what's the solution to that? The solution is learning how to multiply volumetrically, how the universe multiplies. And I've already produced all of these things. Could you explain that though to the to the layperson? How does the universe multiply volumetrically as opposed to the way it does not move, does it linearly? It does not walk on. All of our math is based upon a two-dimensional projection. What they do in calculus, they will reduce one act if the action of all things, they'll keep trying to reduce it down to one moment because they believe Newton's first law that everything is moves in a straight line or everything is still until acted upon they forget that everything is in motion and that concert of motion yep. is in vibration some everything's always vibrating that's motion the other forces involved in order to have equanimity in their equations and so how in a practical sense does this affect mathematics well, once we let go of Cartesian space in the 90 degree angles, well, picture this. Let, let's take another <laughs> practical place. Look at a computer chip. It has all of these 90 degree turns on it, typically, where they run the electricity. Can you imagine running at 186,624 miles a second in one direction and you hit a 90, you hit a wall and you've got to stop, bounce off of that wall, and then you pick up your speed and you bounce off the next wall and you bounce off the next and the next and the next and the next. How much heat are you building up? Mm -hmm. How much friction is being, being built up from the interference in comparison to if it was just here, just going around? It would build up no heat. And if you allow it to be spiral, which my patent was talking about, that first patent was talking about, you're able to utilize all that energy so you don't need the cooling systems. You don't need all of this loss or entropy. Mm. None of that occurs when you go by universal standards. That's all they have to do is follow what the universe does. We have the, the contractive side, patented, ready and available. We have the expanded side, patented, worked out already, ready and available. And we've got the constitution between the two of them. But, but how does that affect in a practical use if you're using math on a calculator, what is wrong with what the calculator is saying? The calculator right now is still saying that we're on a linear path. Mm -hmm. And it's just multiplying things in a, court, in a compartmentalized space. So by reductionist viewpoint, by breaking things down to simple numbers, that you really can't just do that. You, you, you can try to do it, but it's like the piano. Remember the piano, the earlier pianos, they had, before they compartmentalized and everything was, remember that everything in the universe expands as a sphere, everything. Even music expands as a sphere. But what they did with the piano is they took all the 12 notes and then they just start them all over again instead mm -hmm. of accounting for the expansion that space so you would never if you're looking at the periodic table you would never get to the titanium or to the rubidium or to the cesium because they would all keep it with just the seven tones they don't allow for the necessary expansion so you don't have all of these other isotopes to use because they keep things 
here. You don't allow your child, nope, 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 you're not gonna get taller. I need you to stay just at, at, at four feet. That's the height, that's, that's how high you can go. You will. That's like um, what he t touched about with the music. It's like, um, how can I explain this? It's like, yeah, it's like how they turn analog music mm -hmm. into digital music. Mm -hmm. So when you hear, say, um, an electric piano, mm -hmm. As, as good as it can sound as close to the original, because it's electronic now, mm. what they had to do was literally sample a real piano, but they sample it at different frequencies mm. and then combine them together. So the more samples that are taken, let's say from uh, a, a grand piano, right? Mm. They, they will basically put mics and really sample it and then put it together. So then put that into an electronic piano like a Yamaha so that when you're playing it, it sounds mm. good, but mm. it's actually missing a lot of the frequencies that are cut out. Mm. That's why even like when you listen to the analog mm. recordings, like from the vinyls to the digital, like the CDs, the CDs will sound very clean, mm. but they're missing a lot. Mm. Whereas the vinyl, when you hear all the cracks and you hear, and the, the, it's a complete different experience. Mm. And that's what he's basically saying, like even with, the way they've, the temperament of the musical instruments, the way they've tuned them by breaking down the frequencies and tuning like the A to 440 hertz as opposed to 432 hertz, mm. which is the more natural sound. But yeah, that's a real good explanation that he's given in terms of trying to limit things within a box. And we naturally keep growing and expanding out. So they have to allow that, but their math doesn't allow it because it believes in a two dimensional space. And remember, there are no two dimensional spaces because in order for anything to be perceived, mm -hmm. it has to be measurable. And measurable needs three dimensions, but it actually needs four. It needs your perspective. You are mm -hmm. the fourth dimension. And that's what Walter Russell also talked about, that it was four things coming together. And that's what woke me back up. And I was like, four bubbles meeting. But he still believed in the idea of straight lines. He was still hemmed in by it. And he's right, there becomes a cube sphere. There comes a point where everything comes together. But even, hold on, I'm gonna try and pull up. Is it because that we can create straight lines and we get confused? We can't create it, because even when you look at it under an electron microscope, you'll see all the little curved dots that make it up. That's right. <laughs> I, I explained that in that in my video as well. Because yeah, if you draw a line, it's made up of the little dots. That's a square yeah. right there. <laughs> right in the middle sure you'll see that square happening right there uh -huh. but if you look at it from the side uh -huh. from its real perspective you see that it's not the straight lines are an illusion again we are being fooled by our senses because there is no motion in the straight line so all these homes that they're building and they keep wondering why do they keep blowing over why don't you make the, the homes look like a, a, a mushroom follow the curvature of nature and mm. you won't have to worry about rebuilding them in hurricane zones or in, in, in tornado zones. It'll go right over it. They, they, they don't make mm. the airplanes that's just a straight box. They've allowed it to be aerodynamic and curved. They moved away from the straight lines in that, that aspect in boats. They don't have a, you know, the Noah's Ark moving across <laughs> like this. They don't do that. Like I said, no man would be attracted to a Cartesian woman. To a, right. to, to an, to a, a Translation. So Flat back. Like right? <laughs> 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 no, nah, but it's real though, isn't it? You, you, like, you like the curves. Yeah, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense about homes. Why, are really they, why do they keep making them flat? And then when you go to Africa, you see how the huts are built and everything is more but, circle yeah. and like, I mean, it's a, yeah, better architecture. And they keep getting blown over. I don't know what the fuck they're they easy to on. make. They're easy to make, but it's easier to yeah. make the curved one. But like, it especially, sorry, yeah. like North Pole, like the Eskimos, the way they build their igloos. Mm. It's, it's round. It's round, isn't it? Yeah. The, for the wind resistance. Yeah. You have to move this way more, yeah. All of our technology is built on these bricks of the platonic solid. So now we have new building materials with what I've introduced. Entirely new building materials that we can use mm. that are proven and it's super symmetrical that you don't have to just stay with the with the rectangle. Yeah. You can 
do anything you want and you can produce energy. Will you, I want to show the magnetic field. We've talked about the electric field. Mm -hmm. Will you show the video for um, it's a light column? Let me pause real quick. I got to take a leak. Let's okay. pause and we'll come back to that. So uh, pick it up with magnetic field. We'll, we'll know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Where were we? Magnetic what? <laughs> Here it is. Yes. So okay. this is... This is me taking, this is the feminine side, and me taking four of them and stacking them on each other. Mm. With my wife ran one string of okay, lights down the middle. You see the, the double helix. Mm. This spins. What is this that I'm looking at? I call it light sculpture. It's my transcendental lighting. Oh, wow. A new form of lighting. This, this is insane. This looks like a psychedelic experience. But this is this is repeating, this is rebuilding and predicting the wave field, the entire wave field of how it behaves. That's what the magnetic field Show does. Show that again, Jeremy. That's why I call it transcendental lighting, because you could sit up there sober and get taken into an entirely new place. And I just spent it. I have it on a little string at the top, and I just turned it. Yeah, if you just make one of these and have it rotating on some sort of a engine, people would just trip balls staring at that. Mm. <laughs> and nobody is, you know, it's like I can completely change the lighting industry. And that's just one of the conjugations. Inside of there, the gift that I gave you, you'll see how the magnetic field bonds it, interacts with itself, how they overlap. If you take those off the of different there. ones. Yeah, take those off of there. That's the electric field. What you have right there, all those are defined the electric field, and you see they're contractive. Mm -hmm. But inside of there, you'll see that the magnetic field. How did you make these? I take acetate, and um, <laughs> I, I, they might think it's I take acid. I take acid, <laughs> you know, and draw out the flower on it. I take the pieces of the flower, and then I use a soldering, soldering. You know, so you make all these I by build, hand. I build all those by hand. So what, what? This is crazy. That right there is the light. If you take that, that right there, which you're holding in your hand. If you, no, no, no. This? Take uh, where six bubbles meet. This one. That that is the decay. This is electric, and this is the magnetic side of it. This is that at its decay. This is when the light is expanded out. This is the decay of the light field when it becomes. A magnetic thing, a magnetic expression. Light is blue. No, electricity is blue. Light comes out in, in yellow and red. And how is this concept of taking these forces and converting them or representing them as these shapes, how is this received? Nobody has has responded to it. They won't. The, the universities, I went to Morgan State because of... Um, a really, really beautiful brother um, brought me up there. I saw that interview. Because he saw these things. Yeah, no, up there. Um, he saw these things, and he, we set up an entire presentation at Morgan State. Dr. Bardwell, even though I've written, we've got three papers that's been peer-reviewed, you know, the geometry of the proton and the tetrian um, that's been peer-reviewed. He said, there's no way this guy knows any of this stuff. And so he <laughs> knows any of the things inside of here. So no one from the science departments showed up. So they bust in children from, from different schools. And I talked to them and I showed them how the universe worked. And then they brought like 20 PhDs from outside um, that came in and I showed them how the universe really behaves. You know, but none of them spoke on and out because what happens? What happened to R Rupert Sheldrake? When you speak against the established norm, you get pushed outside. Mm -hmm. You don't get funding anymore. Well, I think part of the problem is also that when someone defines someone as uh, one particular occupation, and for you, it's you're a very talented actor. So I'm people, actor. you're a very talented actor, in my opinion. And Thank you. so people think of you in that way and say, so there's no way he's awesome at something else, too. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of that happened, like you said, the guy that interviewed you, interviewed you for Rolling Stone. Yeah, Eric. Eric. I invited him into my home for two days. 
and I walked him through all of these things, but he had an agenda at Rolling Stone. They didn't say Terrence Howard has discovered this, that, and the other. They said Terrence Howard, a very dangerous mind. Mm -hmm. So you put that kind Did of... Did they mean that in a complimentary way? I didn't read the article, so I it can't It wasn't tell you. taken <laughs> in a complimentary way. So they thought you were crazy. They took it as crazy. Right. And he tells you that I had something serious, but to everyone else, I want to take you guys to something where, um, remember Nikola Tesla said, man, said if mankind understood the magnificence of the numbers three, six, and nine, he would have the keys. <laughs> oh, they've done a video on that. If you go to the linchpin's bonding. Can I bring you back to the Rolling then, Stone thing, though, before, because you kind of abandoned it? I think. No, I'm going to show oh, you. Okay. I'll show they have you an on agenda. that. They had an agenda. Yeah. Because remember, at the same time, they were calling me a wife beater and all of mm -hmm. those things. And then I put out the video showing what that same woman that had painted in a black eye, those pictures weren't made at the police station or at the hospital. She took those pictures herself and she was, was blackmailing me oh. for oh. years because I used to, I had, um, when we met, <laughs> and I was studying to be a Jehovah's Witness. I was trying to do all those things. So we, we weren't having any sex or any of that stuff. So we got engaged and I bring her to um, my home in Philly and I had this tape because I, anytime I had interactions with somebody, I'd heard that, um, that, um, that Louis, Louis Armstrong recorded everything around him. You know, it's the same thing with uh, Marlon Brando. I recorded all these, all his interactions with people. So I was recording things, and if I'd had phone sex with some girl, I was recording that. If we were having sex, I recorded that because I wanted to make sure there was proof of you know, if anything happened. Right. But I also recorded my mother the last two weeks before she died. And I had that on a dictaphone. And I didn't play with computers at the time. And um, she was like, oh, uh, why do you get this on, on the dictaphone? I can put it into the computer. I was like, oh, great. And we could keep it forever. Wonderful. You're so wonderful. I go downstairs. I'm cooking some greens. Two hours later, I come upstairs. All of my dictaphones from the last 15 years she has downloaded into her computer. And then she's like, I was like, no, no, those are my private things. I don't, like, oh, no, it's okay. I can just hit delete. And so I was like, okay, great. And then three months later, when I tried to break up with her because we had no sexual, you know. That's not even funny, man. Chemistry. Chemistry, sexually. She was like, you think I erased those things? <laughs> I kept those. <laughs> and I know what you've done. And she started with the blackmail, and all I really wanted back was my mother's tape. You know, where she told me, I know you're gonna be okay, Terry. I always knew you were gonna be okay. I just wanted my mother's voice back. I paid her whatever money she wanted. She destroyed that. <laughs> I've been she after that. She destroyed my name. But like I said, I thought that was a death blow, but that's what took me back when I had nothing. That's what took me back to this and that greater being started showing up again. And you think if that had not happened, you probably would have gone further and further oh my down God. the world of acting and you would have abandoned us. Oh my goodness, I had, you know, I was doing Iron Man. Yeah. Out of nowhere, you know, <laughs> that gets taken away. Yep, that happens. We did a three picture deal with, with Marvel. A three picture deal, four and a half million for the first one, um, seven and a half to eight million for the second one, 12 million for the third. We signed it. They come back to me the week that my mother dies, and, my, my, and they called my agent, um, Charles King, over at, he was at William Morris at the time. And they said, um, yeah, we want Terrence, but we, we, we want to come back for a million dollars instead of the eight million that uh -oh. we had agreed to. And my agent had an emotional reaction to a business <laughs> decision, and he said, F you, and hung up the phone. Well, immediately they go to Don Cheeto. Oh. And... But instead of just doing that, they had to spend, oh, he was terrible on set and uh, all of, of these course. things and went through all this stuff. And I'm calling Robert Downey Jr. I'm calling him because when I was doing The Brave One with, um, with uh, Jody Foster, um, Susan Downey was a producer with Joe Silver. I'm 
she comes over to my, 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 my trailer and she's like, wow, it's so amazing. Um, congratulations on Iron Man. It's the first time they've hired um, the second lead before they've hired the first. But Robert wants to go in there. And they were talking about Clive Davis and all of that. And I was like, okay, great. You know, I'm just moving along, doing my thing. And he's, she's like, but Robert really wants to go in, but they won't see him. And I was like, I was like, I love Robert. I love what he does. I loved him in, in, in Weird Science. I loved him. Who in, did they want him? Did they they want wanted Robert? Clive Davis to play. Oh, to Tony play. Stark. Because remember, in the series, War Machine was supposed to take over. Right. And I'm like, well, if Robert wants to come in. And so I called Avi Arad immediately. He was the producer on it. And I'm like, Avi. Um, I hear Robert wants to come in, but you guys won't even let him audition. He's like, no, we can't bond him. I'm like, instead of the four and a half you want to give me, why don't you take a million dollars for the bond for him if he gets, if, 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 and, and let him audition, you know, and so he gets the part. Robert is like, I love you. Thank you so much. Da, 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 da. Well, when this other thing happened, I'm calling Robert and he's doing Sherlock Holmes. I called him 27 times. And I'm like, and then leave a message. I'm calling his, his uh, assistant. I'm like, I need the help I gave you. I didn't hear from him until three years later. I'm bumped into mm, his code in his And then, uh, but at that time I'd had um, Empire or whatever, and I came back and he's like, oh, but everything worked out for you. Mm. And you know, I'm, that, that broke me a little bit, but I know how hard Robert had it. Coming out of jail. Coming out of that jail. And so if I was, if I had to sacrifice myself in order for that, because guess what? If, if Euclid or any of them had discovered one of the wave conjugations, they would have been happy. I was given not just the one, I was given the entire electric field and magnetic field and the constitution between them. So I was given so much more. And my wife, when she first saw the mirror all shape, you know, um, if you open it up, you'll see it's the, it's right here. My wife looked at this, the feminine side, because that's all I had really gotten to at that point. And she was like, this is what you'll be remembered for. And your acting will be just a footnote. And, you know, she nursed me back to life because I was angry. I was really angry. And I was going to use all of the knowledge that I had and I was going to destroy mankind. <laughs> 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 like, oh my God, right out of Marvel. I was like, yeah, I was about to, but then. Well, I'm glad you didn't. I, now it's, you know, I'm here to help mankind. This is. You know, to have the universities check out what I'm doing. Well, it's one of the most fascinating things about this is that it's so easy to ridicule when an actor has something that's outside of acting that changes everything. But if you were just I... a person, if you were just a person who went to school, became fascinated with these concepts, became obsessed, and made it your life's work, and you know maybe you acted in college a little bit, it no would... one would care. No. But you had become successful as an actor. As a bad guy. Yes. And then you'd gone through all that bullshit. So you gone through all that bullshit, and now they're like, no, 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 that guy, there's no way. Those are threshold guardians. <laughs> yes. It's a necessary step for it. I would gladly trade whatever $100 million I would have made doing that for this right here. What I've been able to do right here. Like I said, when Tesla said, if mankind could understand the significance of three, six, and nine, have keys to the universe, will you play that video for me, Jamie? Yeah, the linchpin bonding. It's the, it's, I think it'll be, well, there's, there's three of them. Yes, that one right there. Now, before we play it, um, if you count the struts and watch how many struts bond as it becomes this right here. Okay. And just count it as it goes. Just let it, let it play. You'll see one, two, three. And we know this is a mag magnetism because it's expanding in the center. Now you'll see six 
of these bonds. And those colors going across there is basically the periodic table. Five, six, yep. And then the last one comes in and now you have your nine. And this is magnetism. Like I said, magnetism expands at the center. So you have your three, six, nine, and it's back to that same fractal again. So now what you do, if you will do me a favor. So when Tesla said that, what did he mean? He was talking about these numbers, this, this interaction of these three, six, and nine, but this is all of them coming around the Tetrian at, at 120 degrees. Wow. This is how they all behave. And this is the fractal because it keeps getting back to these four vortices. But now I want to show you after let this go again so they could see it, how all of this, this is the grand unified field put together. Now I want to show you electricity in this space, which will be the next one. And you'll see five linchpins bonding. I need to touch on that because that's in our book, isn't it? Um, the 369. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we explain about how the numbers three, mm -hmm. because you have the unseen world and you have the seen world. And so although you can go three plus three, which will give you six, mm -hmm. you actually get more if you do the multiplication because mm -hmm. it means to increase, right? Yeah. So three times three nine. gives you the nine. Mm -hmm. Nine being the highest number. Mm -hmm. Because as we explained, the nine, um, after nine is compound numbers, yeah, one and zero, zero to make a 10, one, one. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can look at the number three, which again in itself represents the two sides, the mm -hmm. duality, negative, positive, up, down, cold, hot, but then there's a middle part. And then if you took the three points, the middle part, bringing it up to the two part, and then you form the, the triangle yeah, or the yeah. pyramid. Mm. But then that's just two dimensional. But then mm. when you add the other sides and then you add another one below, so you got as above, so below, so you got the three points, then you got the other three points, the two, triangles coming together you get this that six, six pointed point star mm -hmm. but then when you start to look at it in terms of the other dimensions as you said like you got when you're measuring things you'll have height width and breadth, breath yeah? yeah but then the fourth perspective is you looking mm -hmm. at them mm -hmm. so then you'd go from a square which is just a flat to a cube mm -hmm. which has the other one but then when you start to put them together on top of each other so if you put a pyramid on top of another one and another one and you start to see that double helix mm. forming as well as if you put the, that's what he was saying that his shape to the structure, you can put all the geometric um, symbols together and we show that in our book. Mm. So if you haven't got that book, grab hold of that, which is fast track your spiritual and conscious journey. We break down the numerology of the three, six and nine and um, her nine mm. being the nine to the ninth power oh, of nine, yep. nine ether, Everything is held together by ether, so mm -hmm. that's important to, to kind of touch on. This is the dodecahedron, and that's the release of energy, but it'll still make that same tetrahedral space. Watch. Mm. Yep. So when I talk about materials engineering, now being able to be manipulated, and you could see that, that the dodecahedron has been collapsed, and these other because electricity is seeking higher pressure conditions. It's more dense, hmm. but we're back to the, and these five will keep bonding with other fives, building predictable structures, not haphazard things. These will, four of these will come together and make a larger tetrahedron, and then those will bond and make hmm. larger. This is Jesus walking on water. <laughs> <laughs> this is the proof in the pudding. They don't have this for the chemical engineering programs now. They don't need those models of just a ball and just that little rod anymore. They now have what's necessary. The carbon line is that yellow line in between it. And when we put this in the solar apex and replace the sun with it, it predicts every star on the galactic plane, the elliptic, the ecliptic plane, and the celestial plane. Every single star yep. predicts it when we put Unseen and seen. The three mm -hmm. in the physical world, the three in the spiritual so world, multiplying the them. Uncertainty principle it's out the window limitless. Mm -hmm. With this combined with the wave conjugations or with the mirror shapes, 
you can, whether it's expanding or contracting, we can now predict precisely where everything shall occur. And the linchpins have been, I've included all of that into the AI for the linchpins. And the best thing about IBM and all of those other companies, Raytheon, taking my patent and making money off of it, since I have priority, since I invented it, I can now use any innovation that they've done <laughs> off of my patent do you, and not do you, have to pay them a licensing fee. Really? I have priority. Wow. So that's why I was like, where's Elon Musk? But <laughs> all, that, all that crap out there. And after that doctor did that stuff with the blood thing, they think everybody's a liar. But it's like, I'm not just an actor. Oh. One of the biggest things I've done is that patent the ARBR world that we live in. Doctor, you mean that Elizabeth, uh, yes. whatever her name was? Yes, but yeah. that they think everything is a scam. And then you have the Rolling Stones, you have the Guardian, you have all these people hmm. saying these negative things to where people wouldn't take it seriously and didn't even, didn't even consider it. So I'm like, okay. And hmm. in nature, an animal isn't given horns unless it needs them. So our society as humans, we wouldn't be given this information right now mm -hmm. unless we needed it, unless it was necessary for our, our continued um, existence and survival. That's true. We're about to destroy our planet, but with this, you don't need to. You don't need to, because now we know how to use the universe properly, where you can multiply what that gun, we get more energy out of it than we put in which physics says is impossible, and they gave me the patents to it. But nobody wants to have a conversation. When, when you, you <laughs> oh, think that's that the, I know that. the origin of hominids, that this is a naturally occurring thing that happens when a planet reaches a certain distance from its star in a Goldilocks zone with the proper materials. Of course, the pressure conditions created. Look at... Um, so you think this is happening everywhere, 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 because everything is alive. Look at what happens in the summer and, you know, in the northern portion. They'll, Alan Watts said, you'll see apples occurring at this time. They'll say that the tree is appling. Well, that what happens with the planets? Oh, it's peopling. What? This is just peopling. This is what this is just what occurs at 93 million miles away from the sun. What do you think occurs after us? Well, once we get pushed out further, what happens? We need nitrogen to, uh, to expand into, to unwind into oxygen. But since the nitrogen, since when we get pushed further out, the nitrogen is so far out, so we have to go deeper underground to have the pressure conditions that was equal to us having 93 million miles away from the sun. The deeper underground we go, the less light we have. And as a result of that, skin begins to break eyes get bigger, all of those necessary things. <laughs> what did he say? The muscles the, inside the, the eyes get bigger. bigger. So that's what the muscles said, like the, the, the greys are the, us in the future. Yeah. And it makes sense because, like he say, in order for them to travel into Stella, they, what they're wearing, it's not, it's like a skin suit. Mm. It's like when our astronauts are trying to go out there, you wear the suit, you got a big, you know, a helmet kind of thing the big with eye. the big eyes <laughs> right but if you're coming from the distance there mm. you have a different skin suit, suit yeah. and that's what yeah so that's what he's explaining because you will have to change to suit the environment well, you're yeah. in aliens and all of that ends up taking place but as the animal adapts to changing environment changing yep. condition changing pressure condition we have to we have to change why is it that white people are allergic to the sun? Because they lived inside of a pressure condition. Oh, uh, because of the melanin. There. So when they get into this area where there's a lot of sun, now you have melanoma and all of those other issues. But if they're in their natural environment, there you go. they don't have any of those problems. Oh, right. So they have to keep recreating their natural conditions that allows them to have um, what, homogeneous nature yeah. with everything but we're living outside of, of nature because we're acting on faulty ideas faulty fundamentals we're still going with euclidean straight lines when there are none 
and we would rather think we have understanding of the universe at 4% and keep the 96% as a mystery. And we invent all these science <laughs> fiction, black holes and dark matter and dark energy and all of this stuff, neutron stars that's spinning so quickly. We invent all of these things because the math is off. Oh. Because the math is not based on equanimity and they have norm renormalization. You know, there's... Um, I'm, I'm not going to go down the whole rabbit hole on it, but all, everything they've been doing, that's why they keep recreating a new, have a new theory for this. Now a boson and a God, God particle and this, and, and you have the three quark model and the gluons holding them together. And now we have the four, the five quark model and we have all of these extra things that they keep inventing and they have the CERN collider smashing living things mm. together. <laughs> smash because these these protons they're live everything mm -hmm. is conscious there's a like what's the where's consciousness exist in, in our in, in in mankind is it in our head and our body what's the difference between men or, or or mammals and and plant life do you think a, a, a grain of rice has 54,000 genomes in it we only have 26,000 who is more evolved? But what's the difference between us? If you, Jamie, could, could pull up the, I have a picture showing hemoglobin and chlorophyll. And you're going to notice that the hemoglobin has the same exact combination of carbon and hydrogen that we have. The only difference they have is the center of theirs is magnesium and the center of ours is iron. That's the only difference. You put a cephalopod up there, it will be copper. The same interaction. Of can, <coughs> where does consciousness occur? Where does, where does the sentient being, is it, is it just in the iron? Or is it uh, magnesium deals with the pressure condition, like with a cephalopod, it has to have copper at its base because of the pressure condition. It's the same experience, just under a different temporal dimension. Uh -huh. change the pressure condition change the motion condition you change the organism it adapts but it's the same living principle there's no difference between us and the plants when people are chopping down and ripping things off just because they can't hear them scream uh -huh. that's deep it's, it's wrong so tcotlc.com we put all the patents inside of the center for truth love and consciousness that's what tcotlc.com means because I knew that I have a propensity to get angry and get emotional and could misuse this stuff. So we have a board of members that dictate how these things will be licensed out and how they're used. So it's not just on me. So where do you think consciousness is coming from? Everything is alive. Everything is conscious. Everything is like if you take it from the biblical thing, what part of the universe wasn't made from the the creator did he picks up some other if, if the creator is eternal so we just don't think of them as being alive because they don't move and they don't talk to us they don't we don't speak their language we don't have the sensory ability to perceive their consciousness but we know we've learned like if you look at the secret life of plants they show that they'll take plants of the same mother and father and they'll seedlings and they'll watch the root growth and the because they are siblings they are moderate in their root growth, but then they'll take the same species of plant, but use a different seed from another parent, and they're more aggressive in their root growth. Wow, they're cooperative. They're cooperative. Yes, they're hmm. when they're in the family. The tree, mm -hmm. they'll take they'll take um, radioactive carbon or nitrogen and put it on the leaf of a, a mother tree of a fern or of of, of some kind of or fir tree, and they will put. Um, uh, isotope or radioactive um, identifier at the at its offspring and you'll see that that mother tree is mm -hmm. through the mycelia is taking that nitrogen and giving it to its to its youngsters yes yeah. they call this is why family has to come together mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's called synergy mm -hmm. for more of us together have more power more energy and able to do more so mm -hmm. if that's not making sense they I don't know what will. Interactive and they share resources. 
they're alive and sentient because everything is alive. But we see everything as death, as dead because of what the Bible says. <laughs> Because it's six ephah, death, <laughs> ghost. The universe is just one big exam, big nothingness of dead. There's nothing dead in the universe. Mm. Everything is alive and everything is a piece of God. So when God, when we do good things, then God is considered God is good. When we do bad things, God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> it's just mm. how we are being perspective. And we can all take the conscious level and recognize, okay, somebody's got to do the right thing. And if you do the right thing, the right things happen. 100%. And you're going up against the stream of mankind, but I've got the entire universe behind me. I have the universal phenomenon and observable evidence and data. Measurable. And, behind it, and 97 patents and trademarks and copyrights and multiple industries that I've invented. Nobody else have ever invented tangential flight and the ability to fly or unlimited mid-air bonding. There's also a lot less confidence in the stream of mankind than there used to be. There's much more of an understanding that the stream of mankind is often going in the wrong direction. <laughs> because of the Michelson-Morley experiment in 1887 and because special relativity took off. And that meant, oh, everything is dead. So we have no responsibility to anything. Everything is happenstance. We all got hit by one big explosion and mm. therefore life has no purpose. Nothing has a purpose. And so now we can kill off these things and that they haven't looked at hemoglobin and, and chlorophyll. They haven't looked and said, okay, wait a minute. Hmm. Let's do the law of similarities of A is equal to B and B is equal to C and A is equal to C. My view is this. If you know one thing about one thing, you know one thing about all things. Find the common factor and either multiply or divide. And that common factor happens to be hydrogen. Everything in the, that we, in the observable universe that we see is 99% hydrogen. Well, now we have the geometry of hydrogen. So now we can manipulate 99% of the universe. And there's nothing we can't accomplish hmm. but they're still trying to make that money yeah that's the problem the problem is we're, we're contained and confined by this desire for constant never-ending growth in money and to control industries and to control people's ability also to express themselves you know which is a, a big factor in th this strange new world that we're living in where almost anybody can express themselves yeah, things get very weird and slippery if you have been used to being in control for the entire time and now you can't. And so when an yep. idea mm. like this... Hamster just going around, around the world, isn't it? It's not just groundbreaking. Don't want to be free. It's, uh, it's revolutionary. It's revolutionary. This has never occurred where someone has completely destroyed the Ptolemaic model of the unit of, of the solar system. He had 39 different equations of how the planets and all that moved. And of course you're going to get ridiculed, which is always what happens. But when, when someone comes along, especially someone like yourself, who again became successful in a different field, you know, and now all of a sudden you're saying this, like, you, again, if you were a regular person that didn't have a background, wasn't famous for something else, they'd, they'd probably be looking at this very different way. But no, they still wouldn't accept it because too hard. It, it challenges their entire last <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. No. let's not forget that yeah. part. Yeah. All this credit about the pyramids. If those were That's real what you're saying, we have to touch on that. Yeah, because I feel there's some racism involved mm. in it because just like with the master teachers, like if it was a Caucasian or European that was putting out that information that he's been putting out, it would be well received. Yeah. It would be much more well received and it's the same with Terence. Um, yeah, it's reality. You have to talk about these things and address it mm. because I see people going at him and you can just listen to the way they're talking and it's motivated by racism and not dealing with the actual facts and the science. Because if he's openly said, I invite everyone mm -hmm. from the universities, Elon Musk, everyone, let's, yeah, let's work together on this, then how is that selfish? He's actually opening it up to everyone. So... And, and as the mother mm. teacher says, always, it's always said, don't believe me, check, check it, out. it out. Do your own research. research. But how many people do their own research to find out if what the master teacher is saying, if it's actual fact? Yeah. 
and and the fact that like we keep saying he was saying all these things that these new people are saying now yeah 30 40 years ago yep. that's how far ahead and advanced yep. he was saying the same things that people are saying today don't believe us research go and check mm. it out speak to people who were here reading these books 30 40 years ago yeah. But um, yeah, the racism thing is, is strong, but we've got to elevate past that yeah. now. Civilization. No one wins the race in racism. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> but I believe those things came initially from 100, 200,000 years ago, and the shape was more like this. But after people had been removed or the influences of the individuals that made them like this, they now was like, okay, we're just going to make them with straight lines. Mm. And they limited themselves to that because they opened up the flower of life incorrectly. They invented straight lines where even God can't make a straight line because of his rule, the rules, their rules of equanimity. Two, what, what do you mean by 200,000 years ago? Because <laughs> they have to stick to 6,000 years. years. Yeah. Water damage. <laughs> under the sphinx itself. Where do you get that? <laughs> <laughs> under, 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 he looks baffled. Shah, geologist at uh, Boston University, and he thinks that there's a lot of water damage on the temple of the sphinx, but he, d he doesn't think it's that old. He thinks it's thousands of years of rainfall. Thousands of years of rainfall. But that's just after the cutting of the stone, you know, and it's, it's a disputed thing. It's not universally accepted. It's a fantastic theory. But Theory, that, yeah. yeah. Go back to Tempe. Yeah. Tempe. Yeah. You go back there, those, what they've done with the carbon dating on that in itself is like 13, 14,000 years old. I think it's 11. I think it's 11. It was buried yeah. 11. Purposely it's buried. Still not 6,000 though, bro. Yeah. He's trying to bring it back. The, uh, the dating is universal <laughs> through the ground, which shows that it was purposely buried. You know what? It's actually interesting because like, you know, you have... Other civilizations, the Dogons, Mali, Mayans, the Mayans, the Zoo Aztecs, mm, the Sumerians, ancient Egyptians, what they call Egyptians, talking about these things. So it's like when they're saying who's giving the dates, it's mm. like what makes you the authority on that when there's yeah. other people saying it. But well, let's so keep that watching. Put the construction time previous to that, they don't know though. But look at the at some of the maps that came out of out of southern Europe, mm -hmm. not southern Europe, southern Africa, right. that Bingo. showed Antarctica in its full right. and how it behaved long before they were able to do a number of things they were able to do. Right, when they didn't really even know it existed until, I think it was... Those oral traditions go back 100,000 years. Yeah. Those oral traditions don't go back, you know, 6,000 or 5,000. So what do you think <laughs> happened? <laughs> Mankind, I mean, I'm... Well, okay, let, let, let's, let's unpack this. If we are 98.7% identical to simians, right? Right. And there's only 1.3% differentiation. Who's more evolved? We're considering ourselves to be more evolved. Mm. But you look at the simians, they have 48 chromosomes. We only have 46. Where did that change occur? Where did we get this new understanding and how did we lose two, two chromosomes, even though we're 98.7% identical and behave just like them? There's that 1.3% differentiation, whether you want to call it the Anunnaki or some other influence that acted upon us, but there's been a change within our DNA and our structure. And we were given the, Samarit the Samaritans the Sumerians were given their number system. Uh -huh. That's where the one times one equaling one came from. And, so I, and their system of, of straight lines or the platonic solid. So my thoughts is the individuals that wanted us here to whatever work, whatever manipulation they did for us, they wanted us to have a system of measurement, but something that could not contradict not giving us the full picture, so they gave us a limited scope mm. where we can mm. measure small areas, but we would never need the larger areas. We'd never need to be able to move out in space because we were engineered for a particular reason. And those stories, you go right back 
every civilization has similar stories. The Hindus have those same stories. The Africans with the Dogon. Yeah, we just said that. Huh? Same story. All of these stories proliferate around the entire globe in the ancient tradi traditions. But what did the Catholic Church do? They went through all of these areas and destroyed all of those books, <laughs> destroyed all of that information. Yep. Trying to hide the Why? facts. <clears throat> what Just like the, the Taliban blew up the Buddhist statues. Why? Yeah. Why did we destroy all of the Native Americans, um, all mm -hmm. of their information? What was the purpose of it? There's a dumbing down mm. that's, that's happening. Well, it's also a forced compliance, right? Comply with the new ideology. Whoever's in control, whether it's the Catholic Church or the United States government in the 1800s that prevented Native Americans from speaking their native language. Yeah. Now, if, you, if you're correct <laughs> with this <laughs> concept of a sun ejecting particles which eventually over billions of years form planets and then there's a natural occurrence that happens where, where intelligent life forms emerge and that this happens everywhere through the universe and that there are steps and that these steps that are past where we are is what we look on the iconic form of aliens with the large heads and the big eyes and the tiny spindly gray bodies <laughs> this, if we go to other planets, and we do, especially with drones, if something knows how to travel here from somewhere else and understands this process, because this process is ubiquitous throughout the entire universe, yes. everyone, and at a certain level of technological sophistication and understanding of matter itself, especially if they have already figured all this stuff out a million years ago, they would probably want to experiment or even accelerate the evolution, our advancement. our advancement. And it appears our advancement happens very unnatural. I think most biologists will agree that the biggest mystery in the entire fossil record is the doubling of the human brain size over a period of two million years. It's a very, very, very fascinating point. It's a real, it's, uh, it's not debatable. Does it scream happened. manipulation from an external force? Something, right? Something. It screams something took place because it's an extraordinary something. And if it's the something that takes place that's responsible for the single most bizarre animal on the planet, the one that can manipulate its environment in a way that nothing contemporary can do, nothing alongside that lives with it in the same timeline, is even close. Nothing's even remotely close. It's very, very, very different, but it's also extremely flawed for something that has such a high level of technical sophistication. Because of our fundamentals. Because we're But remember, the master teacher explained that they're not allowed to tamper with our evolution, but every time man tries to misuse the information that they've been given, mm -hmm. you know, from extraterrestrials and there's a risk of destroying the planet, they will step in yeah, and yeah. they will try to upgrade us mm. and give us information so that we can basically prepare and look after the planet as the caretakers. Mm. And this is what Partner Babylon is doing now with the upgrading of the intellect of you know our brain capacity to give you more information so you can actually know. So that's mm. on point what he's saying. So barbaric. We're still the core. flat. We still we, we know the world, the universe and the world is, is round but we're still using flat principles to, to approach it. Right? Flat earthers. So, mm. <laughs> if you were a super sophisticated creature from another planet and you needed some particular materials from our planet, and the Anunnaki story is all about gold. Yes, they needed gold. Fixing up the... Yeah. The, the idea was that they were going to... And this is all from Zechariah Sitchin's work. Mm. And the, the idea was that they were going to suspend gold particles in their atmosphere in order to protect their environment. Um, because they had abused... Yeah. They had abused it. And I think there was also some speculation about volcanic eruptions, that volcanic eruptions had probably ruined their, their atmosphere as well. But they had the ability to do something about it and the way to do something about it is to mine gold and that they took us and they created us from the from, hominids from the hominids the the reason why that's so interesting 
is because gold is fucking useless 10,000 years ago. Why do you need gold? No one needs gold. If you're surviving, if you're a hunter-gatherer, gold means jack shit to you. Why is it the number one method of currency throughout all human beings all over the world? Well, remember, they abandoned... Remember for a long time, like if you're speaking... If you're thinking about Italians, they talk about... They, it's salt. It's the salt. Yeah. It was salt. Salt for Salt food. was yeah. what we used for currency mm -hmm. in exchange for mm. the gold. Right. We use so where did the gold come? Why did we have an appetite right. for it? Why? If it wasn't placed into us, if it does not sustain us in any way. It's very intriguing. It's very intriguing because it doesn't do anything. If you can't make a weapon out of it, you can't see he, they don't know about the Muff Cousette and how mm. that what gold plays as a part of that in the interstellar the travel, travel yeah. and how it interacts with your pineal gland to, to kind of open you up. So, yeah, they're going to say gold's not worth anything. Mm. But when, when they start going into the information that Pana Babianun is teaching us in terms of why that gold, the liquid gold, gold yeah. which is in, you know, in our blood known as Mavkuze or the elixir of life. life. Yeah, yeah. yeah, So there's an importance that they don't know about the use of it in terms of that traveling like um, he says, for those who may be able to travel back to risk, mm. and when you're doing yeah. that type of traveling, warp speed, and he explains this in great detail. So yes, it's going to be baffling to some people who don't understand it. But um, but the ones that didn't know about it, obviously um, the slave trade, because that's yes. what they were searching for. Right, that, because that. they wanted to know what yeah the elixir of life right. was and yeah. how to stay, and also mm. because mm. that transformation is where you're able to be like the being, mm. they're called Thoth or Tahuti, who's able to travel into dimension at will and incarnate into any dimension and any time period and so on. But yeah, let's keep mm. going. Make a tool out of it. It's too soft. Um, it's and they, they for weren't necessarily doing electronics, but silver right. is even more conductive if you want it for electronics. Silver is like 17 times the conductivity of gold. But they weren't even using it for no. that. You're right, but they did use silver as well. Silver was also uh, used as currency. Currency. But, but not like gold. Gold's the king, always has been. Gold is number one. So why do we love it? Why do we need it? Why, why do we, we trade always, life for it? Always. Why have people like risked their lives traveling across the sea with wooden boats filled up with it to the point where they sink? And then we find these fucking bones, these dead souls, <laughs> 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 surrounded by gold coins. It's crazy, One right? One of the greatest things about the linchpin is it's also submersible. Oh, and wow. so one of the main points is, you know, I'm about to build five smaller ones. The only thing that I'm missing right now, because we've have, we have built a ton of, we've got like 20 different prototypes that. So, so when you say submersible, you mean transmedium? No, like transmedium. They can so go can underwater. Fly like these UAPs. Yeah, but no, we can go about. underwater right. and be able to go now to maneuver to and be able to grab. They can identify where that gold is. Oh, God. <laughs> and now they can go down and pull it up themselves oh. without even informing the government about it. I don't need any of that other stuff. It's, and I think that's why this has been suppressed. When I first He's took about it over to get radio, paid, man. You know, mm. I have these mm. two test pilots, you know, both colonels, you know, within, been there for 30 years, one at Boeing, one at Raytheon. He said, let the, the people at Raytheon said, let's see if he can keep it. They didn't know I had all these other patents mm. surrounding it that I, mm. they had no idea, but it's usage. Mm. If they use it, the world changes in a beautiful way. If they ignore it, we cease to exist because we'll continue down this wrong path. So do you think that intelligent life in all places of the universe has figured this out already? If they are traveling here, they have, because you don't use power there you to go. go from one place to another. You decouple from mm -hmm. the electric pull. You decouple from the Earth, and guess what? The Earth pulls away from you at its speed. You decouple from the solar system, it pulls away at its, at its speed. You decouple from the galaxy, it pulls away from you. That's all you really need to do, mm -hmm. but they didn't know how to decouple. In two years, I won't need props anymore. I'll use molecular excitation, which is all inside of the patents that I've put in there. 
So the one of the things about this whole back engineering thing that you keep hearing about with the UAPs, the back engineering, is gravity propulsion systems. <laughs> Is that there's a system, this is what Bob Lazar talked the, about. On, on, a, on a a identified phenomenon. aerial phenomenon, oh, that's no, what they're no, calling it. Instead of UFOs, that made another name. That it actually exists in a particle collider in the 2000s. So he was talking about this in 1989. And what he's saying is that there's some sort of stable element that gets bombarded with uh, Omnicom. electricity. Omnicom, yeah. Element 115 as well, in terms of... That you can do that. Or you yeah. can just Bob Lazar, these guys were talking about use it. Use a discordant tone. And those tones will push away. There's a particular tone that the Earth is on. There's a particular tone, the key of A. FAC? It's yeah. 432 hertz. I said it's 432 hertz, yeah. All you have to do is have resonance. the opposite tone to that, and it will be pushed away from it. You don't, the same way a bubble at the bottom of the ocean doesn't use any energy to get to the top, but because it's completely in, in opposition to its environment, the environment pushes it away. That's what you do if you're an intelligent race. You can use an oar if you're trying to swim across the ocean. You can get across there, but an intelligent species like Alan Watts said will use a sail and they'll tack and make their way across. You use the energy, that's what judo is. It's supposed Ta to be the Tao, mm. the Tao way, which is the Wu way, which is not the Wu's the bat way. Mm. <laughs> the Japanese just say judo in a, in a harsher sense, but it still means using the energy of your opponent against it without expressing unnecessary energy. So you just use the equal and opposite forces of tones. It's, you can do all of this stuff with, with tone. You don't need to use any electricity beyond creating the frequency. That's what the Beatles use, not the Beatles, the singing group, but um, those Beatles that they have in uh, the Scarab Beatles. Um, and those people those experiments. Yeah. <laughs> That's what these shapes used properly, vibrated properly, it's a levitation. And so that would be the method of propulsion. Method of propulsion and also decoupling. And it, so it wouldn't show a visible means of, of propulsion. Just like these UAPs don't show visible means of propulsion. They don't have a heat signature. No. So they'd be operating on something entirely different that's allowing it to propel. Mm -hmm. And then you could figure out how to manipulate that how. Take the frequency of the Earth and find out what's the equal and opposite tone to it. Wrap your ship in there. And how fast could this thing go? You decouple from the Earth. You move at, what's the Earth moving? At a thousand miles an hour or so. It takes 24 hours for it to get around. Mm -hmm. You know, how quickly is our solar system spinning? You know, whatever that tone, whatever that frequency is, whatever that speed is, you decouple from the solar system. Mm -hmm. Now the solar system moves away from you. So in that sense, you could move at insane speeds and not experience G-force. No, mm -hmm. nothing whatsoever. And that's what the linchpin or the angle of resonance allows. Because now we can decouple from these six relative positions. So when we feel G-force, like when you're in a, have you ever flown in a fighter mm -hmm. jet before? Yeah. You feel those insane G-forces? Mm -hmm. what, what that is, is the resistance of the Earth itself. Of the of, earth, of the spin of the earth itself, of our centripetal place where we are with it. Remember, the earth is spinning. Uh huh. The solar system is spinning and acting a force. The 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 galaxy is spinning and acting on it. So and now all the these forces force is pushing, pushing down. In. Mm. So if you decouple from them, mm. then you have no force pushing you through, and you can essentially travel instantaneously it's to anywhere if any, you have the right frequency. The right frequency. It's all frequency. It's Tones, vibrations. And and <laughs> we got it right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Cartesian space or Euclidean, yeah. 90 degrees, 45 degree things. You cannot get there. You have to have the, the truth. And that's why I think I was given all of these things. It's like, hey, let's stop destroying the planet. Yeah. We don't need oil to, mm. to do all of the things you're doing. You know, we can now take, right now we're writing a patent. Um, I'm working with. Uh, Jeff Yee, um, another mathematician that we worked 
and me and Chris are doing another patent, but we're able to take the radioactive decayed water, the stuff that they're using to cool those rods and use the proper angles of incidence and the proper field and can reverse that radioactive decay to in, in days and not take a hundred years in order for it to do. It's just a change of pressure and motion mm -hmm. conditions. When I was talking to um, Jeff Yee about it, he was like, well, let's, we can use neutrinos coming from the sun and, and saw that there was a different relationship, like I was saying before, how radioactive decay happens, seems to happen quicker around Venus or closer to the sun. And I was like, is it possible that that's due to the change at the greater pressure condition that's happening and therefore the electricity is able to have a greater effect upon it? You know, I was like, oh, no, no, how do you know that the pressure is greater? you know, at Venus, and I was like, oh, you still think that, mm. you still think there's a void, you know, mm. we'll send a probe there and see how the pressure increases, and send the probe out and see how the pressure decreases, mm -hmm. the greater, closer to the, the sun, or the, the apex, or the, the primary, the closer to it, the higher the pressure, the further away, the less the influence, your child, my child, you get my child around me, I've got a great deal of influence on it, and he behaves the way I, I expect him to behave. You take him outside, uh, you know, to, to a theme park, and I'm not there, they run crazy, right? Because <laughs> I'm not there to, to, to act upon them. So right. you can use that for propulsion at the same time. Mm. I feel like we could do a hundred of these podcasts, but I think we should wrap this one up. <laughs> we, did, we just did about three hours. Uh, I I saw when I was looking at a lot of your stuff, I was like, damn, he was sitting there talking for three damn hours. He just flew what out. are they talking about? But we didn't even <laughs> we haven't even covered half of these things. Let's do it again. I would love to. Let's do it again. But if you like I said I'm very interested to see how this is received and I'm very interested to see because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that want to be able to talk I'm to you leaving, about this. I'm leaving those things okay. with you. Beautiful. I'll keep just them right so here. that you can, and if you go into my book, you can walk through and I explain. I'm going to listen to this podcast about stuff. 30 times just to try to get a, 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 <laughs> a slippery grip on any of it. But uh, thank you. I really appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you. You're a very rare person. Just you too, man. You made the challenge. I, there's one question I want to ask you before okay, you go. Sure. While you were on Fear Factor, yes, and you watched people making choices for that goal yeah what was your consensus about human nature in comparison to what dignity and integrity should move somebody to do in comparison for chasing that goal well i think for a lot of people first of all what happens is first the show becomes famous right so the show gets on television initially people do it because they want to be on television then the show becomes successful and people do it because they like it. They watch it at home and they wonder if they could do it. Could I do that? Like most people say, the physical challenges, like those would be interesting to me, man, I can't eat bugs. I can't do that. A lot of that's in your head. And it's, it's, it's like anything, it's just a challenge to see if you could overcome your natural instincts. And like I, I ate a roach, it was nothing. It's no big deal. I ate a bunch of things. I ate, I would, a, I ate a cicada. I ate a sheep's, sheep's, cicadas are actually good. Like, people cook them. And there's, bad, by the way, you should cook them because there's a giant hatch about to go down right now. And uh, they were just yeah. showing images of these things coming out of the ground because it's like a 13-year cycle. Yeah. And there's billions of them. Um, and you've eaten them. They're a delicious. great source apparently. of protein. Yeah, a great source of protein. People got to get past the idea of eating bugs. But so <laughs> then people started doing the show because they wanted to see if they could do it. And, you know, some people are in credit card debt. You know, they're young, they want to take a chance, it might be fun, you know. Yeah, but it's at the end of the day, there's a certain amount of self-respect yes. that, that comes up to it. Like, if I'm forced to eat a slug or something <laughs> of that nature, if I'm on, uh, like, naked and afraid, it drives me crazy because oh, they don't even get paid for it. They go out and get wow, these parasites yeah. and, and for life. Yeah. That changes them for life, and it's just for the freaking experience. No, that's why we put on clothes. You it's know? the clout. <laughs> They want to be on television. People want to be on television so bad. And I it's think being strange. on television is the worst thing that has ever happened. I feel like an emotional whore, mm. you know, because they don't appreciate that, that I'm tapping into something sacred, mm. some sacred emotions.
mm. and now and I'm just turning tricks for Johns, mm. turning tricks. And if I do a great job turning this trick, then they'll they'll do a gangbang with their buddies, Fis literally and 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 figuratively, <laughs> you know. And that's yeah. what they want right. to do. And they want to make all the money out of you mm. turning your tricks. Bingo. Yeah, but the thing is, like, for the person that watches it, it's entertainment, and it's very valuable. Like, wow, what a great fucking movie. You leave, you feel mm -hmm. inspired, you want to create. <laughs> you know, there's positive to it, too. I could see how you could look at it as a negative experience, but particularly you, the producers because you have so much negative. more to offer. Well, yeah, there's always. You're always going to get pimps. Yeah, and, yeah. That's, and, and I love interacting like with the people, and, and, and I love... The, the, the growth of that. I love when people say you helped me through a really dark area because even when I play bad guys, I'm like, I'm trying to find, I'm finding the, I know that bad person is just missing something that it mm. wanted and needed. Yeah. Like all humans. Yeah. Just a hug, just the right hug and, <laughs> you know, and, and somebody understanding. And I'm going to leave with this one last thing. Okay. Um, I was on a plane once and I always ask the older people when they're sitting next to me, what's the best advice you can give a young man? You know, I was 33, and this when we were going over to Germany, this will take one minute. We were going over to Germany, and I asked this one guy that was like 70 years old, and right at the moment as we were on our way, he said, if you look out the right side of the plane, you're, you'll notice the island of Ibiza. And he got real quiet. And then five minutes later, he said, have as much sex as you can now. This is before the advent of Viagra. Whoa. And then I was on coming back from the Czech Republic um, and uh, a few years later, and I asked this man as we got on the plane, and he sat next to me, and he waited until we got all the way near L.A., and as he was reaching up for his bags, he said, you got it, what's the best advice you can give a young man so he can be good, have the, a successful life? He said, you got to remember, in every person you meet, there's a little piece of God in them, and that's who you talk to. And I added to that, but make sure they see it in you first. Wow. So that's what my life principle is about. Mm -hmm. Make way for life. Please make way for life. Find the peace of God in you and show it. Shine through it. Push it and, and, and take up your, your, your stake. You know, take up your stake and, and, and be the Messiah for the day. Mm. And to Shine the that little light of yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I discovered half of this stuff while I was still watching porn. <laughs> it's not like I was just a monk. <laughs> I was still watching porn and I'd come back and do this. So I was like, okay, it's, it's, you, there's a balance. Mm. There's crazy it's a balance. balance. That's, great. Mm. That's a great way to wrap this up. Let's do this again. We're going to do this again. I would love that. 100%. I can't Reach wait. out to Elon Musk, man, it's, and, and Jeff Bezos if they want to finish. I don't know Jeff, but I know Elon. Elon, I, would, right. I got his solution. Okay. We can clean up the upper atmosphere. You know, we should touch on that. You know, obviously, that like, they've discovered all the like gold and all yeah, that stuff yeah, because yeah, all yeah. that stuff comes in. So obviously, he's trying to get up there yeah. because one little piece of one of those asteroids mm. is worth <laughs> the entire money on this planet. So obviously, yeah, Elon's trying to get there first. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see the response to this. <laughs> all right. Well, that's the end of that. That was long, innit? it? <laughs> long, but I was like, okay. So. Yeah, good video, good video. A lot to take in. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff we've spoken about yeah. from our doctrine from the master teacher, Panda Babiano and Dr. Malachi Z. York's books. Been teaching since what, 60s, 62, 63. Came out publicly 70, 1970. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's even from 70 to now, that's, that's like crazy. 30 years to the year 2000, Jeez. plus another 24 years. That's what, yeah. 54 years yeah. of pure information that's not been yeah, really disputed um, and was first to say a lot of things. So, yeah, man, that's um, interesting. It's good to see people starting to talk about the stuff we've known for mm. years. Um, yeah, opening up the eyes of the world to... Yeah, yeah, actual facts. Yeah, that tree, tree of life, um, you can find that in um, Sacred Records of um, Atom May Black Book. Yeah, yeah. It breaks that down in there. All right. It's a wrap. Until the next time, stay tuned. Subscribe, like, and share. Spread the word. <laughs>